Good evening and welcome back to Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes Weekly Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition Livestream Campaign. My name is Monty Martin and these are the untold tales of Drakenheim. I am here with my co-host on the and partner in crime. I am Kelly McLaughlin, also one of the Dungeon Dudes, and I am going to be excitedly playing some D&D tonight with two of our very good friends, and I will have you guys introduce yourselves and uh, just tell us a little bit about you. Is that us? Were you yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, Nate, if you'd like to go first. Sure. Hey, I'm Nate Taylor from Dwarven Forge. Uh, we make the world's finest miniature terrain, uh, hand sculpted, hand painted, building wonderful worlds that you've seen all sorts of times with these guys uh, making all sorts of crazy stories and scenes with our stuff. And I'm super excited to uh, be here and play some D&D with you guys tonight. Awesome. We're excited to have you. And oh, if you want to, if you want to follow me on Twitch, I'm at Nate Taylor, N-A-T-E-T-A-Y-L-O-R. And we're, what's our, I don't know all the Dwarven Forge socials. We're at you, want, you want me to do the Dwarven Forge socials? Yeah, now? you're the professional. You do. <laughs> okay, so on Instagram, you can follow us at Dwarven Forge Official. On Twitter and Facebook, you can find us at Dwarven Forge. And on Twitch, we are at Dwarven Forge Live. Woo! We are so pleased. Uh, Nina, thank you as well. Could you, would you like to introduce yourself as oh, well? Oh yeah, I did the socials <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I don't know who I am. I just know the social accounts. I'm sorry. Well, I'm, uh, I'm Nina Heath, also from Dwarven Forge. I'm one of the lead sculptors over there. Um, and I am super excited to be playing D&D with you guys. I remember when I first saw your builds way, way, way back when on social and I was like, oh my God, these guys are, they got all the pieces. This is great. Yeah, we do. I mean, yeah. All it is such a pleasure to have both of you guesting on the show. It feels like your work has been a guest on Drakenheim for the whole time, like already. I, I can't think of... I, I don't know everything that you have sculpted, Nina, but I am sure a bunch of it has hit the table in the in some of our shows as well. And just the amazing creativity has always been so inspiring. And the work that you two create has inspired so many of the adventures that we've played already. So it feels like it's such a privilege and a joy to actually be able to roll some dice with the two of you. Uh, I played with Nate once before already, and Nina, it's it's so exciting to get to play with you as well. I might have inadvertently That's... killed Kelly too. You, oh, you killed Kelly? It was it was close. I think I no, I died. Yeah, I did die. It was well, horrible. everybody did, but yeah. you know, it was a dragon. But you, were, was... I think you were coming back though. You might have uh, that next death save. Could have it been. was it was such a great night. That was that was uh, such an exciting game. And honestly, like just to echo Monty, uh, I think Dwarven Forge has been inspiring us since before Dungeon Dudes even existed. Uh, so you guys are like a huge part of what we do. And when we first started live streaming, it was kind of uh, this uh, decision that one of the reasons that we said, yeah, we should live stream is to show off our amazing Dwarven Forge setups that we had. So it's an absolute treat to be able to play D&D &D with both of you. And speaking well, of that, while we are playing online this evening, I have photographed some Dwarven Forge setups mm -hmm. based on the maps tonight that I will be sharing at opportune moments. So while we won't be playing on the terrain, it is with us in spirit this evening, <laughs> even though we play Ooh. remotely and across. So uh, it, it is, well, it, it does, uh, it, it was really nice to bust out all my terrain again and make some builds and photograph those. So we'll have those up to share with every, uh, with all of you watching along with us because we felt that it still ha should have some sort of presence with some awesome guests tonight. Can't wait to see. Is anybody else getting a weird echo from Kelly? You have like the voice of God when you speak. Or is that your character voice? See, I'm getting it from you, actually. Not, huh. I don't know. Is everybody else getting it from me? I hear no echoing. I hear no echoing either. Everybody right, sounds so great to me. It's just Nate and I are hearing each other as the voice of God, and that's how it's going to be tonight, I guess. Hey, yeah. It's that telepathic link, 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 Ex link. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, stream confirms, uh, the stream chat can says no echo, so I, I, it might be some weird magic in the air. Um, with that, shall we play some Dungeons and Dragons? Yeah, I All think right. so. Let's get to it. So, 
These are the untold tales of Drakenheim. The city of Drakenheim, destroyed by a meteor 15 years prior, has become a city of horrendous horrors and grand adventures. Who can say how many bold heroes and would-be treasure seekers have ventured into their ruins, for few have returned to tell the tale. But over the next several weeks, here are some of the campfire stories told in the taverns of Emberwood Village of those bold treasure seekers, adventurers, and heroes who have dared to venture into the ruins of Drakenheim and may or may not have returned to tell the tale. We'll see how things unfold this evening. Tonight, Gathered in the bark and buzzard tavern of Emberwood Village, a quaint and quiet tap house, are a rather unique set of rugged heroes. Word has already spread of these strange looking folk, and the purported rumors are spreading of why they have come to Emberwood Village and what they might be venturing on to do in the ruins of Drakenheim, for they are truly an, an eclectic band, said to have ventured together many times. First around our table this evening, Nate, would you like to introduce us to our, your character? Sure. I will be playing Mraul Sarcisse. I am a uh, white snow-colored uh, tabaxi from a uh, remote northern village. In fact, so remote, I don't even know where it is because I had terrible wandered lust as a child and wandered off right before a blizzard rolled in, took shelter in a snow cave, found some ancient ruins, uh, and ended up in the Feywild somehow uh, and wandered. I'm a Fey wanderer, a ranger Fey wanderer, and wandered, wandered, wandered every which way for years and years and years. And never, uh, I don't know where my village is. I can't find my way back because I've wandered so far deep into the Feywild and the like. So it's somewhere up in the north. Uh, but I've studied under, uh, I learned rune carving under a cloud giant named Kritzel. I learned archery from sprites in the Feywild. I studied with Eladrin. I've traveled the uh, world and I still have the wanderlust, but I'm always seeking uh, relics. I'm an archaeologist I'm looking for truth and I'm thinking maybe it'll find me a way back to my home and the rest of my family. But I have the best companions you could ever want. I've gone on many an adventure with these uh, two fine companions. And which, uh, which of your companions would you like to introduce, Nate? Oh, Chug. All righty. Nina, take it away. Greetings, everyone. This one's designation is Combat Humanoid Ultimate Gladiator, but you may call me Chug. I am a Warforged School of the Drunken Master monk. Um, my memory is a bit fractured, so I don't remember too much of my past, including I don't know how or when I was created. I just know that I woke up in a ditch and wandered into the nearest human town where they started fighting in their gladiatorial arenas. Um, I sustained some damage there, damaging my memory further. Uh, they kicked me out of the arena. Luckily, I was able to fall in with the monastery. Um, the, the, our, our school is called the, the Overflowing Flask, the Way of the Overflowing Flask. And they took me in, they trained me in their ways, and um, from there, uh, I set out on adventure. Thanks, Nina. We're so happy to have Chug adventuring with us this, this evening. And finally, Kelly, why don't you tell us who you're playing this evening? My name, my character's name is Osiris Crodley, and he is a elven wizard of the scribe. Uh, Osiris works at the Illyrian Historical Library in the Department of Lost Lore and Magical Truths. His job is to seek out documented catalog historical findings regarding the origins of magic, its impact on life on our planet, and the truths of the various magical creatures that exist. Uh, for, for those of you who are having trouble following along, uh, to put it simply, I go to various places in the world and uncover rare artifacts and make sure that they are properly documented documented so that the future wizards can learn from our great expeditions. And speaking of great expeditions, why is a strange warforged, a tabaxi archaeologist, and a old wizened scribe 
venturing into Drakenheim. Why, indeed. I mean, the way that I, I mean, if I, if I could speak for us for a moment, uh, what I will say is it seems that all three of us have similar interests. Uh, you see, there aren't many Warforged wandering around. You don't see them all that often, and nobody quite knows where they come from. Unfortunately, Chug has damaged some uh, of her of their memory crystals, and looking into it, it seems that we have alluded to an idea that maybe it's linked to an expedition we had planned for the North Pole. But all of our research has led us to be unable to find where this secret facility might be and uncover the truths of this nature. Now, as an explorer, I need to document and find these answers, and it's possible that they're in Drakenheim. In fact, we've discovered recently that in the Royal Museum of Drakenheim, we believe they were planning a very expedition to the Northern Pole. And they have not only maps of the region, which is on maps, a letter of passage from the North Sea pirates, but also the true compass. Ooh, now that is an artifact worth finding for three relic requisitioners, is it not? I think so. Quite indeed. Held in the archives of the Royal Museum of Drakenheim, an, an formerly a noble's estate which an, an eccentric von Kessel king converted into a museum in a rather misguided attempt to educate his children. <laughs> <laughs> the... The Royal Museum of Drakenheim housed all manner of antiquities and artifacts of the king's and the royal's personal collection, what few artifacts that they could abscond from the jealous hands of the Amethyst Academy. Though only a few magical artifacts are housed there, legend tells of Professor Eirdry's true compass, a powerful magic item which points the way to whatever the holder is seeking. If you could uncover this compass, perhaps it would guide you truly to the true north and these strange ruins that, si that may persist even in the no most northern regions. Mm -hmm. Thus, before you can brave perhaps the most dangerous and unexplored region of the north, though the dangerous and hazardous and not recently explored city of Drakenheim. It should be nothing for a group like you. <laughs> nothing at all. <laughs> That's the alcohol talking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've been to many uh, dangerous sites and we always make it out just fine. Uh, we have the best fighter here. We have one of the greatest explorers and, and me, one of the most intelligent wizards in, in all the land. So uh, obviously we, we, we are no match for, I mean, the, the monsters of Drakenheim are no match for, for the intellect of, of, of three as astute as, as us. <laughs> well, you better be because you're all playing ninth level characters. So you are Ooh. quite seasoned <laughs> indeed. So with that, Let's take a look at our map of Drakenheim and perhaps discuss how you will plan your expedition to the ruins of the city. This is the city of the ruined city of Drakenheim, as best people can recall. And what you know is that the Royal Museum of Drakenheim lies about here um, hmm. in the old town, south of Castle Draken, uh, right on the edge of the old town and the nobles district for the museum itself was once a noble palace that apparently le legend has it that, that that a noble who had fallen out of favor with the king had it seized and then it was donated to the public trust so this the now each of you however uh know that Getting this far into Drakenheim is no easy feat. So you have heard of several different ways that you might take to get in. Do you recall these or shall I recap them for you? 
No, we could scale the walls, but legend has it that gargoyles will animate if we try and uh, breach the walls. There's the King's Gate, guarded by a wild troll king who will extract quite a toll. There's apparently a path in through the sewers, but old Blackjack Mel will sell us a map for a, a paltry sum. And of course, we could speak to the Hooded Lanterns, who would let us in for a 20% uh, say donation from our findings. I've been doing a little bit of research about the, the layout of the city before we came here. And uh, one thing to note is, uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, the, uh, the trolls actually own the gate closest to where we're going. Indeed. The hmm. King's Road leads to King's Gate here. Hmm. And that has allegedly now been taken over by a monstrous group of trolls who have sworn fealty to one only known as the Troll King. On the opposite side of the city uh, is Shepherd's Gate, which the Hooded Lanterns, the remnants of the old city watch, have reclaimed their barracks there. And they don't always allow folk to pass through, but in exchange for your, uh, any of your salvage, they may let you pass through. There are other gates of the city, but the area of Temple Road around Temple Gate has long been known to be in the control of a vicious and monstrous band of gnolls, and many adventurers have met a grisly fate trying to pass through it. None really know about the Academy Gate. People have said that they would try to take it, and no one's ever come back from it. To the south is Champion's Gate. That gate is controlled by a strange cult of religious, uh, a religious faction known as the Followers of the Falling Fire. But once you get through Champion's Gate, you have to pass through the South Ward, which is where the crater is, by far making it the most dangerous route to travel, uh, to take into, into the city. So might not be your first pick, uh, considering the dangers involved of passing that close to the crater on your way in. So if I'm analyzing this properly, we have the King's Gate occupied by stupid trolls that we might be able to outwit and outsmart. Or uh, wrestle. Or, I mean, maybe you. We could I'm wrestle not the much trolls into submission. This is a possibility. I would leave that to your expertise. Just offering. You're the if, smart one. <laughs> if anyone could wrestle a troll, hmm, it's Chug. I mean... I've seen Chug wrestle many things. I'm, larger I'm ready to take down these trolls. I the the trolls' gate is the closest. We could go the safer route through the Hooded Lantern's gate, but then we have to travel further on the inner city. So safer passage in, but more dangerous road through. Or there's the sewers, which sound disgusting and horrible, and I don't know why we would want to go in there, but it's it's a possibility. Well, is there any reason we don't pursue? Originally, I thought the safe way was the way to go, but seeing as the King's Gate is the closest, perhaps we approach the trolls with a parlay, and if things go south, we can always flee and then circle around and either take the sewers or the shepherd's way, no? Oh, perhaps. Uh, we should I... uh, perhaps buy the map from before, before we leave, Mel? from Blackjack, yes, yeah, so that we... Just in case we have to take the sores, we'll already have it. I, but I, I believe with your intellect and Chug's wrestling maneuvers, uh, I, I bet we could, we could work our way with uh, the trolls. Man. It's possible, and I mean, uh, they're just trolls. What could they possibly ask for? I mean, we give them a leg of lamb. Do we have a leg of lamb? Anybody? No. Uh, we give them, they're, they're going to ask for, I don't know, a gold coin or a, or a, or a piece of meat. Yeah. Uh, as long as we have something to offer, I'm sure they'll let us through. No problem. I have this bottle of brandy. Oh. Perhaps they'll like that. Very true. Everybody likes a good uh, snifter of brandy now and then. Well. So let us, let's, let's buy, um, if perhaps we split up one, one, one of us buys the map and the others buy uh, provisions, uh, big, f you know, hearty food for the trolls. We top it off with this fine brandy. Mm. What, uh, what type of provisions would you like to purchase on your way in? Like a full cow. A full cow. 
Are we getting a live cow or mm. slaughtered and carrying it in on a wagon? I, no, Maybe easier to dragon. carry a live one, right? Don't mm. they want it fresh? Well, I don't know what trolls eat. We should. We mm. shouldn't carry it. We should let it walk. Mm. Mm. We could ride upon it. Ah. Mm. <laughs> All right. Well, in that case, who would like to set out to buy a map from Blackjack now? And who'd like to see if they can hunt down some beef? Uh, I'll let you guys divvy this one up. Who if is you the want best me to... negotiator for this price? Oh, man. Uh, negotiations. It's not me. I, I know. I can tell you that. <laughs> I have a minus one on charisma, guys. <laughs> oh, I, I, I am fluent in cow. I, I, I speak to animals, but I, I would also, maybe I could drive a harder bargain with Blackjack Mel than anyone else. I also have a minus one on charisma. All right. Well, I'm a flat uh, zero. So <laughs> why don't you, uh, you see if you can wrestle a cow and I'll go get the map. All right. Sounds get good. Get two cows. Yeah. Raul, you travel from the Bark and Buzzard, a quaint tavern across the muddy street of Emberwood Village to the Skull and Sword Tavern, a ramshackle establishment known for its ne'er-do-wells mm. and known for being a meeting point for the various gangs of brigands, bandits, and other scavengers and scallywags who haunt the ruins of Drakenheim. Eyed up by the barkeeps and the bartenders, you stumble, you head over to a dark corner of the room. Can I, before I go in, can I like tussle up my hair and make myself look a little more bedraggled? And I... Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there street are, tough. There's know. a handful of other alley cats and tabaxi amongst mm. the, the, the patrons here. The skull and sword is a ramshackle wooden tavern. It is loud, it is sweaty, it reeks of moonshine, blood, and sweat. There mm. is always someone fighting inside. People are screaming. About three different people are playing three different songs on three different types of broken instruments, which is cre creating a cacophony in the air over the loud and yelling voices. You're pretty sure that was someone's dying scream as you walk uh, as you walk in. But mm. in the midst of several tables is this short, scrawny ma man with greasy black hair, unmistakably known as Blackjack Mel. A and pointing uh, pointing your way, you need only ask, where's Blackjack Mel? And anyone can point point him out to you. And as you come up uh, on the table and says, he says, hey. You look like a cool cat. Listen, I'm a busy man. What can I do for you? Wow. Well, greetings of salutation. I am Raul Sarcis, Relic Re Requisitioner, and I understand that you have the finest map in all of the land, perhaps the only map in all of the land, uh, of the sewers to get into Drakenheim. I'm seeking the Royal Archaeologist Guild, or oh. Royal Archaeologist Museum. Royal, the Royal Museum, eh? Huh. Piddle. Don't know why anyone would ever want to go there. Seems like a bunch of old ancient junk if you ask me. But, you know, it's your funeral if you're heading into the city. Now, I must tell you, you know, there's a there's a little bit of a wide range of maps that I got here. If you're looking to get your way down through the sewers, you know what I mean? There's a lot of paths, and uh, just to give you a little bit, if you're heading down that part of the city, you know, the, you might want to come with a couple of bits of information on your back. I can sell it to you for a good price, if you know what I mean. Hmm. Well, if by price you mean common currency, we may be slightly lacking there, but uh, I would hear you out. Well, see, that's a little bit unfortunate, because common, cur common, common currency is like Cash. common courtesy. Everyone wants it, but very few people actually have any of it worth giving so i figure here if you're lacking a little bit of the money you look a little bit on the season side you got anything uh special on your person ah 
My person is special. You see, I have been touched by the Fey Wild. I am one of the greatest explorers you will ever meet. And we are on an exploration like the bards will sing of for generations to come. We seek the North Pole itself. And our first stop is oh, really? the Royal Museum. So hear me out. If you give us the map to get the compass and get the map to get to the North Pole, every one of these stories, these epic tales is going to begin with. And so the adventurers got the map from Black Jack Mel, which allowed them to begin their epic tale. You will be in the first chapter. Most people give up after the first chapter, so you know they're all going to read your name. I am offering you fame and infamy beyond what you already have here in this little town. I like the sound of this. You I'll throw in a po healing potion, too. You, you said something about a compass? What kind uh, of, but of compass? Course. Oh, we seek the true compass. It's an artifact of uh, great renown. One of a kind. Oh, really? Oh, it's going to be very valuable. What's this true compass thing do? Well... Oh, wait a second. You are pumping me for information. Ah, it's a secret I I'll tell you for a price. I'll trade you for a map. Well, you tell me what the compass does. Uh, yeah, I could be convinced to give you the map. Hi. Right. It leads you to whatever you're looking for. Oh, really? Oh, Sounds yeah. Sounds interesting. All right. You said your name was Mrow? Mrow. Mrow Sarcisse. All right, Mrow. This sounds like a pretty uh, interesting thing that you're after here. I think, uh, you know, I think we'll tell you this. Okay. He turns around to one of his bouncers. He says, yeah, go grab it for me. They come back some moment later with a old map of Drakenheim. Mm. Um, and several tunnels are marked on it that pass through the sewers. This is like this is an old like vintage map. Yeah. So as, a, as an amateur cartographer, this is yeah. this is quite exciting, right? Th this would be would have been a map that maybe would have made been made like twenty years ago. He points out. He says, "Here's the deal. If you're looking to get to this part of the city, you can take right up over here." And he points to the map. That's where the aquifers take the water in from the Dran River. You can go right in through there. You might be a little bit wet, I'm warning you, but the aquifer goes right in to the wells of the city. Now, there's two aquifers. You want to make sure that you take the left one, not the right one. If you take the left one, it's going to take you to Slaughterstone Square and you're never going to come back. But if you take the right one, it's going to go to this little plaza that's going to open up in a well. Wait, wait, wait. You said take the left one, not the right one. No, I said take the right one. Don't take the left. Right. No, don't take the right one. Make sure that take you take the one that's the right one that I'm telling you. If you take the wrong one and not the right one, you're going to end up dead. So it's the left one. Are you one listening is... to me? I am speaking language to you. I have, you know. <laughs> so the left one is the correct one? No, th you, yeah, you take the left one if you want to die. You so take the right stone. Exactly, exactly. Okay. You left take that slaughter stone. Right is correct. Yeah, yeah. Pretty sure. Okay. Now. Pretty sure. Reasonably ever... sure. I mean, Have I've never ever... taken this passage myself, but I'm just telling you, we, you know, I got, I got the best people, the best, tremendous folk, help me out, part of this operation. And I'm just All telling right. you right now, I guarantee you that this is 100% safe. We'll get you into the city. As long as we take the right one, not the left one. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. And, you know, if this works as well as you uh, say, perhaps I will add to your map collection because I am a bit of an amateur cartographer myself. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds good to me. Well, thank you. It was a pleasure doing business with you, Mr. Mel. And now I will take my map and uh, begin our epic journey. We pan See you in the history books. With that, we pan over to Chug. Chug, you're looking around here, <laughs> and as you scan through Emberwood Village, there's actually not a lot of meat. There's a lot of booze, but there's no farms out this way anymore. Most of them have been abandoned. 
And so most of the meat that comes into town has already been, uh, oftentimes, as the animals come in, they get slaughtered right away. So very few people keep live livestock for any long period of time. You pass by this caravan on the outside of town, and it looks promising for a moment. You think you see a pair of bulls, but it looks like they might be entirely made of metal. And don't know if trolls are going to eat a, a, a bull made of metal. But the provisioner there is this massive mountain of a man. He wears a suit of black velvet, and he has chins upon chins upon chins, and a wide feathered cap. And as he sees you eyeing up his his strange bulls, he says, Mm, yes, Gorgons. I had them imported from far across. The best beasts of burden you have ever seen. Are you looking for something, my antiquarian friend? So the first thing I'm thinking when I see this man is if there are no cows, perhaps trolls would like to eat him. But anyway... Um, uh, uh, greetings, friend. Uh, query, do you have meat cow or just metal cow? Mmm. Greetings. I am Aldor the Immense, the finest provisioner of supplies, both mundane and magical here in Emberwood Village. You are looking for food, is it, or meat? I am looking for a cow that is meat and not metal. For what one do you have to patrol? For what purpose do you want such a beast of burden? I uh, was told that perhaps trolls would enjoy eating meat cow, but they are unlikely to enjoy metal cow. I do not have a cow, not one that is whole. You must understand I am a man of appetites myself. He pats his belly. But if you what, are looking, what do you eat? Mm. Can I buy some of that? I suppose the only thing better than food is coin to purchase it with. Well, indeed, I have several goats and sheep. I was going to have mutton stew for dinner this evening. He looks at his hand, which is covered in rings. But I suppose I could part with some of them for some coinage. I can sell them to you for five gold a head. Uh, I open my coin purse and poke around in it and pull out um, what seems to be a paper clip and some lint. Uh, my apology. Is Osiris with me? Uh, I, I, I feel like I'm hanging around yeah. behind, but like I'm kind of just mumbling to myself, and you see like a magic quill appear in the air, and a book is floating, and I'm taking note of all of the things at Eldor the Immense's table, and you see me like I, I have like a little spyglass, and I'm examining his products. Uh, I'm completely um, oblivious to what's happening, but if you have a question, yes, I am right next to you. Osiris, query, hmm? may I borrow some gold? Oh, uh, yes, of course. I, um, my character sheet says I have 10 gold, so I'm guessing that's what I started with. It's enough uh, to buy two goats. <laughs> I, 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 like, I don't even look up or acknowledge, like, I just kind of say, yes, of course, and I toss my 10 gold to Chug. And Osiris, I must be honest with you. I have no intention of repaying this debt. Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> Thank you, friend. Ah. So I go back to... This, this immense man, and I hand him the coins. Uh, one of his, uh, his uh, porters brings out a pair of fattened goats and gives you the ropes, and he takes the coin. I, if you are taking these into the city, be careful. They will certainly be an attractive prize for any of the rats that dwell in the streets. Good luck. Uh, miss, Mister, Mister Immense, is it? Uh, have you have you ever considered uh, sending some of these artifacts to the museums? They're, they're extremely rare and unique. Uh, to to see them just here on a cart, rather than being displayed and 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 studied for knowledge and and purpose. Uh, do, why, why? Well, my good man, they are on display for sale. 
sail is money, and money is power, and power brings a knowledge all its own, don't you think? Hmm. I, I suppose, but I'm assuming that you sell them to poor saps who go venturing into the ruins and then die, and then you just recoup the profits. So really, they're not seeing the proper value. And what proper value would that be, my good no, man? N n knowledge. Knowledge is power. Don't you understand that by by studying these artifacts, look at you look at your table. Look at the items you have for sale here. I see potions and and and, and magical uh, weapons. Mm. How you how you came across these and, and slipped under the radar of the Illyrian Historical Library or the or the Westamar libraries or or museums is is unfathomable. But interesting interesting setup you have here in my time i have seen plenty die with a head full of facts and an empty belly and an empty wallet given the choice i'll take the belly and the wallet thank you very much but, but you are not thinking about this correctly you've said that money is power knowledge is also power so therefore money is knowledge indeed money can buy a good deal many secrets can be And time is money. Therefore, Wait. knowledge is time. If money is knowledge, I just gave you ten gold. That's all my money. Did we I just also lose? gave him fifteen minutes of our time. <laughs> so, in fact, he may owe us. <laughs> Very well. This is fine banter. Take a third goat. I do have a way with words. I'm so happy that my charm worked in this particular moment. <laughs> Very well. With a map in hand through the sewers and three goats. What could next? go wrong? What, what could go wrong? <laughs> I'm going to name the goats. You're going to name them and then we have to give them to the yes, trolls? Yes, this, this one is Sheila, this one is Beverly, and this one is John. Ah, my third wife's name was Beverly. This will be quite amusing. Alrighty. They deserve names. With that, are you? Is there anything else you need before you set out on your journey? Hey, let's get this. Let's get to the museum. Very well. Hmm. You set out from Emberwood Village towards the city of Drakenheim. As you come down over the hill, you see the corpse of the city far off in the distance. It's about a 10 mile trek from Emberwood Village. And as you do travel across the muddy road of Champion's Way towards the city, you can see through the haze and the fog, the silhouette of the ancient walls of the city and the great castle draken perching like a vulture over the corpse of the city. There in the distance, paired against the ruins, uh, the, the, the massive castle, is the great tower of the Amethyst Academy, towering thousands of feet tall. Yet, through the midsection of the tower, it is said the meteor crashed right through it, blowing out the middle section. But the top part of the tower still hangs in the air in defiance of gravity. You can see the ruins of the tower blown out and floating in the air as you approach. The high spires of the great cathedral and the gates and the octarine glow settling over the city. As you trudge through the mud towards the city and take a crossing across the Dran River to come around through the King's Road, you approach the city and enter into the ruins. This part of the city, Kingside, that you are choosing to head in through, was once the the was a fine upper class district of the city known for its inns and warehouses and as you pass towards uh, the walls of drakenheim you see the king's gate in the distance as you head through the cobblestone city streets i'll have each of you roll me a d6 at 20. Oh, no. a d6 please name <laughs> <laughs> Nate rolled a 20 on a six. <laughs> Love it. That was the joke. That was <laughs> I got four. I got a three. I got a one. All right. If you guys aren't familiar, ones are bad. Okay. As you come up 
towards the gates, you can see a you see a scream echo out through the air as a man clad in chainmail comes running towards you and as he screams and looks at you in the eyes you see a javelin massive in size pierce through his throat and he drops to the ground and striding forward through the mist ahead come three hulking trolls all of them are wearing what appear to be scavenged bits of equipment and armor and themselves carrying spears and the the three of them see uh, as they come up towards the the body of the man they they see the three of you and one of the trolls cries out that one's ours you leave it be we have no issue with you but he he's ours a greetings of salutation. We seek your mighty troll king. Wait. You're seeking the troll king? For what purpose do you seek out the mighty king of the trolls? Says one of the trolls. The, the, the other says, shut up. The troll king ain't giving any audiences to, to small folk like these. We're ah. just to bring back the food. Well, we come bearing three fatted goats. For his eminence, majesty, excellency, whatever his title may be. Because we seek entrance into the city. That's all. Yeah, we'll give you some goats if you let us in. If he's partial to wrestling, I'm also up for that. The three, the, the trolls huddle and you hear them talking to each other. And you, Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> cask of brandy. You speak uh, giant. Do any of you speak giant? Uh, no. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wait, I speak giant. I okay. studied with a stone giant. Wait, <laughs> I answer it's, my own question. It's one of the few languages I you, don't speak. You hear, so. you hear the three of them. Uh, you, you over. Make, give me a perception check. Uh, oh there yeah, that's my yeah. jam. I, all right. Nineteen. You can hear them speaking in giant. And the th three of the trolls are, are muttering to each other. They've got three goats. Three is bigger than one. And and the other troll says, but the goat isn't as big as a manling. It doesn't count. It's not the same. Well, what if we ask them for like a little bit more? And they say, troll king's not going to be happy with this. Not going to be happy with this. Last time he had goat, he was raging for days. And the one of the other trolls says there's... Fine, then. We'll take the goats, but they need to give us extra. And the three trolls look up at, at the three of you and say, Your goats will be sufficient payment, but not sufficient payment. For this, hmm. we ask for a little bit more. In exchange for... We only ask a very simple price, though. Normally, we charge a lot more than this, you must understand. But we would like to charge you an arm and a leg, plus the goats, for a safe passage. And you, you've already laid claim to the corpse on the ground? Yes. He didn't pay the toll. But he's not on your side of the wall. Don't matter. So I killed him. He's mine. He looks alive to me. I like... I, okay, wait. I'm going to say that, and now I need to figure out. All right, I, give me a deception check. Oh, oh no. It's not quite dead. I, I get a 10, and I kick I kick the corpse to try to, like, make him move a little. The, the troll goes over the corpse, steps on the corpse's head, says, doesn't look very alive to me. <laughs> Chug, do you have I, a uh... potion of growth? I do. What if we what is uh, thinking? A big goat. Ah. The biggest goat any troll has ever seen. If we were to offer before? your king if we were to offer your king the largest goat that any troll has ever had. And and I'll throw in my 
bottle of brandy. How about that? Give me a persuasion check. Oh no. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Oh, oh no. Uh, 13? The biggest goat ever. Where are you hiding it? If you turn around for a second, I'll go get it. It's shy. The three the three trolls say, I gotta see this. And the three trolls turn around. We're gonna get, give you to the count of ten to give, the, give up the goat. And they turn around and they put their, uh, their hands over their <laughs> eyes and they start counting. Okay. One. I am I'm pouring this potion down the throat of uh, the third goat, John, because that was my least favorite one. <laughs> you can be little John. As, as you as you pour John the potion now. down, you hear the tr- one of the trolls say, "Oh, what what comes after two? And one of the other, other troll says, "It's three. There were three goats. Remember? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, three. Uh, uh, four. <laughs> You must repeat three again after you say four. Uh, right, 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 right. I'm not an idiot. I knew that. <laughs> and- well, while they're doing this, I'm going to look past them and see, are there any other trolls, like, at the actual gate? Or is are they the ones, like, do we see, like, a clear opening into the city right there? Uh, so, looking at the gate, uh, you can see camped out around the gate are at least 20 trolls. Ooh. Many um there are trolls on the ramparts. There are troll there are two trolls on either side of the gatehouse and the trolls have even made a banner and they've scrawled it maybe with crayon or paint or something and they Aww. they painted crayon. on like great troll castle of the amazing troll king and uh, they've got all their banners and all their accoutrements and there there's the smell of pork in the air but that's definitely not pork. It's a long it's actually, pig. Uh, quite, quite well fortified, actually, and uh, perhaps running in while their eyes are closed is not the best idea. So, um, I suppose, yeah, we, we we try to offer them the goats then. All right. So you pour the potion of goat growth down the goat. It's now a potion of goat. <laughs> it's now a potion of goat growth, uh, <laughs> and the goat uh, enlarges to. Uh, I guess it g- grows up one size category. Yeah, yeah it, du- it doubles. Its yeah. size goes up one category. Uh, and the the trolls turn around and they say, "Oh, that's a magnificent goat!" Um, and they say, "All right then. Wait, where's the other goat? Shouldn't there be huh. four goats now? Wait, what comes after four? We're giving three you again. A three. Remember, yes, you go three, four. Three. Right, right, right. So we, right. we're giving you three goats, one of them extra large, which is better than four goats. It's actually three after four. One of the uh, one of the oh. other goats. One, one of the trolls says. One of the other trolls says, "It's just logic." <laughs> <laughs> and so they they take the reins on the on the goats, Oof. and they say, "All right then, you may pass into the city." All right, let's go, 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 go. <laughs> Speed walk. Or they change the... <laughs> yeah, we just... And, and, and the, the, the three of them say, don't forget to bring something nice on your way back. Ooh. Sure. We will. <laughs> We're taking the sewers home. <laughs> How long does the potion last? Oh, um... Oh, boy. Let's see. Uh, probably like a week. <laughs> Pretty sure it's... <laughs> Uh, hold on. Sorry. I Gotta find it on this. I hope it's not a minute. <laughs> 1d4 uh, hours. 1d4 hours, so our, let's our, roll that. Yeah. Oh, you found it same We're, time I, I did. Gonna, I'm gonna roll it, because okay. <laughs> that's gonna be a mystery for us. <laughs> let's see uh, Let's see what happens when... Uh... <laughs> It's longer than a minute. It's long enough for C. It, is, it is longer than a minute. Minute. Yep. Yep. <laughs> if they eat it and then it shrinks, are they no are they gonna be like hungry again? We'll find Does out. Does it shrink after death? <laughs> it's uh Oh man. Yeah. Do you know when you like 
I don't know. This happens to me all the time. I mean, I'll eat in, like a ton of food, like I don't know, and then an hour later, I'm still hungry. In They're large, experience that. yeah, in large reduce works on a creature or an object. So if the goat is killed, it becomes a corpse, which is an object. So conceivably, it could stay enlarged, which means would it actually like? Yeah, what happens afterwards? I don't know. Mysteries of magic. Well, but even worse is if they ingest it in their weird regeneration, like could do something terrible to it. Like they could turn into some crazy mutant. You're, Pro- you're, it, it's you're entirely correct. possible. <laughs> we should we should go back and analyze the magical anomalies that Honor, move, might... move, move, move. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, go, oh, go, oh. go, 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 <laughs> go. We got a mission. We got a mission. Alrighty. So, having passed through King's Gate under the watchful and hungry eyes of the troll, as all the trolls look at this delicious-looking goat, (laughs) (laughs) um, all of them are salivating, um, and you head through the city streets into the cobblestone district of the old town. I'm going to give John the goat little last rites, (laughs) druidic rites. Also, uh, Sheila, also Beverly. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but mostly poor John. Like, he really took one for the team. He's and the goat greatest of all time. <laughs> I regret naming the goats. Yeah, as I you don't see know them, what as, I was thinking. Yes, I feel a slight uh, pain in the old chest. I, I think it's called sadness. I think I'm sad to see them it go. It may be heartburn. Correct. Correct. <laughs> All right, let's go find this, uh, find the museum, find the museum. Greatness okay. awaits. So now that you um, are in the city proper, navigating through the city streets towards the museum, you you know that it lies just off the King's Road, somewhere between the, uh, the noble district and the old town. It takes you, uh, the city streets are a somewhat labyrinthine, but given the circumstances, you're able to approximately find the location. Given I have a map. map. Yeah, and, and you know, the map helps as, as well. Um, so it is not too much trouble to find the location of it itself, but I will have you all roll me one more d6. Got a three Got a again. six. Five. Okay. The the way through the city streets is quiet. As you pass through the mist of the haze, you can see motes of octarine light dancing in the air as uh, it passes through to the afternoon. The mist and clouds hanging over Drakenheim mean that sunlight finds very little purchase in the city streets, and especially with the tall townhouses and rows of Old Town. Um, it is very, there, there's not a lot of light. No one's lant- lighting the lanterns anymore and either. But as you head up the hill it, through where out of the old town to the north and in towards the nobles district, it opens up into much larger plazas. And from here, um, along a quiet street of stone townhouses, oddly unblemished by wreckage and destruction, hmm. with uh, um, it opens up and you get this this moment. If you've ever been to Drakenheim before, in the, the years prior, you might even just think for a moment that it was just a normal misty day. Oh. Uh, a normal misty day um, in, a, in the, the morning of the city. But then it opens up into this larger plaza where before you is a very stately noble's home. Um, it is several hundred feet. The estate area is several hundred feet in width. And you see this long building with a large dome-like spire in the center. Um, there are sta- it is, The walls are made of a sa- stained sandstone uh, and carved with Gothic arch windows with many marbled pillars and corbels and all sorts of nice architectural detailing. And there's stained glass windows throughout that rather than being decorated with any religious symbology, many of the stained glass windows depict 
uh, the natural sciences and natural philosophies. So there's a stained glass window representing botany and a stained glass window representing mathematics and, a, and one representing the arts, one representing sculpture, one representing painting, one representing p performance, and, ver and others representing various ages of history as well and various cultures and peoples. Um, in the the center, the block itself is surrounded by a 12 foot tall uh, sandstone wall that is topped with wrought iron spikes. Um, and you can see that the back of the estate might be a large garden of some kind. Um, but the the fencing uh, and the walls have a wrought iron gate, which is slightly ajar. You can walk right through it. And there's a small plaza leading up to a set of stairs and a pillared portico that has a, a uh, overhanging gable that has an inscription on it that says Royal Museum of Drakenheim. Hmm, should be around the, here somewhere. To the left-hand side of the stairs, there is a large storm door that is covered in wrought iron um, that would be large enough probably to drive a cart through. Uh, and then the stairs head up to a pair of double doors which are carved in wood depicting a um, a pair of ancient warriors on the stone, uh, on the, the wooden doors themselves. Can I use my uh, historical knowledge feature of my archaeologist background to uh, ascertain the uh, builders and original purpose? Well, I think I know what the original purpose is, but hmm. the builders of this area. So the... The noble, the nobility of Drakenheim came from a wide variety of backgrounds and cultures, although the most ancient bits of architecture in Drakenheim are actually dwarven in origin. Hmm. Um, the, that tends to though, be mostly the foundations of the walls and the, uh, the aqueducts and the, and the sewer system tends to go back to dwarven ages. But these, these buildings are decidedly human in nature, and you can see by looking at the architecture that this is definitely the, at one point this was absolutely a noble's estate, and if you didn't notice the stained glass and the inscription on it, you would have probably, it would have fit in with the other estates that are in this area, but it, but the statuary outside and the stained glass clearly mark it as having been converted, uh, probably in the past 150 years into its current purpose. Uh, as as we're kind of approaching my again my spell book is kind of floating next to my head i kind of imagine that i always have this swirl of like notes and books floating around me and orbiting me cool and my quill just appears and, and i'm like writing down information about all of the stained glass windows um as as i'm examining uh and we're not up to the building there's a wall between us and the building uh, there yeah. is a wall, but there is a large wrought iron gate that mm. so the the front plaza of the building itself is all brick the at one point it looks like there might have been some gardens or vegetation or, or plant boxes, but the trees that are out here are long dead um, the the front part of the estate comprises the entire building which is overall uh, which is a mostly a large square shape and so again, it has this um, central dome that r goes up to a spire in the very middle, which the dome itself is covered in windows. And then you can see, l looking from, from the, the street itself, there are these domed halls. And it looked like um, outside of the entrance hallway, there might be three great halls in the building you can kind of see like by looking at the architecture like you know how you when you look at a building from the outside you can kind of tell oh like that is a really big room there mm -hmm. the outer three uh the outer three edges of the room the north south the north east and west wings of this building are clearly large halls of some kind because you can see even scanning around as you walk around the block you can see the large windows looking in although the windows on the west and east have curtains drawn over them um, so it's sort of like an inverted t the 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 building the building shape overall is rectangular in in nature um with the the spire dome being in the very middle and as you survey around like if you walk around the premises you can see that there's a large overgrown garden with a grotto and several trees 
which seem it seems like some of them are alive and Raul, what you notice immediately is that many of the species of trees in the garden are not um, indigenous to this part of the world. So <laughs> they they look clear like there's a couple they, of palm trees. Out. So like they made an exotic garden, yes. or something. Is yeah. what it seems like. And you can see that the bat that the the wing of the building that is facing the garden. It actually looks like it has a glass ceiling that might be broken uh, because you can see poking out of the top of the glass ceiling are several pinkish purple leaves. Interesting point that I might make with my superior intellect and great knowledge of historical facts. It should be pointed out that the true compass that we are here to procure once belonged to a great professor, Andrew who used to specialize in gigantic flora and fauna. Now, if I was a professor of giant flora and fauna and I had a treasure to keep, I would keep it near and dear to the thing I love most, which means that once we get in there, we may want to examine the garden for any clues as to where Professor Endry may have hidden the compass, for it may be the plants have an answer for us it's a theory i do enjoy your theories <laughs> any other questions about the grounds or the outside as you approach the building scanning can around we, yeah go ahead we just we do like kind of a once a once around kind of get the lay of the land yeah see. yeah of, of course so Again, outside the building are what are clearly several botanical gardens that are long yep. overgrown and the grottos. And scanning around, if you come up the hill, kind of look over the walls and everything like that, you can see that the the glass built the glass ceilinged wing of the building. It has this rounded and domed oblong glass ceiling that has a bit of a tree poking out of the top part of it that has pink and purple Beautiful. leaves. There's two doorways that lead into that entranceway. Uh, that come off a porch on the back in the backyard where the the botanical gardens are. So if you're look, so beyond the those doorways, there's the front door, the main entrance, and then there is this storm door that might be a service en entrance of some kind. But of course, with glass windows, any window is potentially an entrance as well. And a glass dome. Yeah. And glass lesson. Hmm. So well, we do a full circle of the building, and about how long does that take us? Just trying to get a sense of the size of it. Um, the the estate to to walk around the whole thing, um, to do a full circuit probably takes you about half an hour to oh, walk wow, around. That's wow. yeah. big. Yeah, right. Um, not all this, not all the areas are are perfect in size, but it is a large uh, large estate. Er, the, this this area. Well, right I, uh, now, I, 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 I Cyrus is. I'm assuming I, I, it takes half an hour because you're looking and studying. Yep. Yeah, careful. Right, right and being careful. careful. Mm -hmm. If you were trying to run around it, it would be about the size of a city block. Okay, that's still pretty big. Yeah. yeah. Well, Osiris, I think your superior intellect uh, probably has given us our greatest clue, right? Naturally. Should we not, should we not uh, start with the, the greenhouse side? I would... I'd like to get closer to that tree and see if I can ascertain anything of its uh, its nature. I've uh, the one with the purple? Yeah. I, I don't know if I've ever seen leaves like quite like that before. It's quite curious. I spent a lot of time in the woods. Have we seen a tree with pink and purple leaves before in our many adventures? Or his as, as a procurer of historical documentation and magical properties, have I ever come across a tree of this sort before give me a nature check are you are you proficient Ooh. in nature i'm I am. I'm not so i i might ask this to morale all right morale go for it hmm. maybe he can aid me with his uh his historical knowledge yeah if i could help out yeah yeah all right add in history it gives me a 17 the it, it you got you got you're very keen-eyed bro wow. so looking at the from this distance you might need to examine the leaves closer but the tone and hue would indicate perhaps either um 
perhaps some kind of cherry tree. Hmm. Right? Uh, like, but, but one that is in blossom. Like, if you've ever seen cherry blossoms, yeah. right? That that kind of that radiant pink, but that it has this purplish hue to it is quite strange. And given the size of the building, this would be a gigantic tr cherry tree. Like, this would be completely and totally overgrown. Like the sort that Professor Injury might study. Hmm. Indeed. You know, maybe we could pick enough cherries to feed those trolls on the way out. <laughs> As long as I have enough magical powers to do so, I might be able to create an exit for us on our way out. But we'll 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 cross that bridge, so to speak, when we get there. Uh, do you guys think that we should try to go for this tree? Is that like like I know that we have three things to procure, but the the main one is the true compass. And actually, Monty, uh, with the uh, three professors that created the three artifacts that we're looking for. We know that Professor Endry was researching gigantic flora and fauna. Do we know what the other two? Was, curator be, Nostrum? Yeah. Um, not, curator Nostrum was um, the curator of the art gallery component of, of the, the building. So he was most interested in art and antiquities, particularly painting and sculpture. Tizana herself was an archeologist in, interested in, mm. in ancient cultures. So, if we look at what history and what facts show us, we might have three clues on where in the museum to look for. There might be three wings, right? Are we seeing uh, there are three large halls? So maybe there's a wing of art, a wing of botany, and a wing of archaeology? I don't know. Let's that is go a in. strange school indeed. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just go in. We can we can we can make guesses all day, but it's, 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 we gotta this is it's adventure awaits. We're Very going well. in through the back glass doors. Right? Seems best. Yeah. Yeah. Um with the since you've run the perimeter, on the bot botanical gar grounds, there is a service gate with a small outbuilding that seems to be a uh basically a, a planter and a garage that that just you know kicking open the doors most of what's in there are mundane gardening tools so it's a it's a large shed with several wheelbarrows and other other things on it a quick scan of it doesn't turn too much up but you're able to enter through this way and head across the gardens and past the grotto and the pools and unlike many areas of Drakenheim, this is teeming with life although it is completely overgrown and wild there, uh, as you pass the grotto pools, there are glowing fish inside the pool. There are f some of the trees and the other plants are from climates that would normally be considered tropical in nature, but they hmm. seem to be thriving here. Um, Does it feel tropical? The uh, there's tropical plants beside temperate plants. Hmm. beside tundra plants so yeah. and and as you walk through it's hard to place a feeling of even the climate in the garden the mist and the air hanging in here the the haze itself that hangs over this area um creates this weird feeling of both hot and cold at the same time um many of the plants though you can see coming up through them are uh, little motes in their veins of octarine light and Ooh. you can see in the bottom of the pool of the grotto gr in the rocks around the grotto there are several delirium crystals that are fused in the fragments of the meteor scattered throughout the garden and in fact in some of the trees one of the trees has small shards and fragments all up the side of its trunk so there are if any pieces of delirium rain down here, perhaps this is from debris of the meteor that was thrown in the garden here. Um, but these crystals, and there's no evidence of a crater or a, a larger piece like colliding off here. The crystals just seem to be, well, almost like they were always here, but that couldn't have been the case. So they seem older than, they seem older than 15 years. They seem like a, like a natural look, part of this place. They seem like they have naturally formed here. 
I would advise against uh, eating or touching any of the water or plants or uh, any fruit growing in trees. Uh, it's possible that this place is entirely contaminated. And as I'm saying this, my quill is floating and writing down. I. It takes me a long time to walk across this garden. I stop at everything. And yeah, Osiris, Osiris, we gotta get moving. We gotta get moving. Yeah. This, this is the first time we've seen these crystals, yes? These crystals, uh, in your current adventure in Drakenheim, these are the first time you've seen them in the wild. Um, the crystals are found all throughout Drakenheim, and they um, they range in size. Most of them are no bigger than your finger. But I mean, the three of us, this is our first time here, I assume? If this is your Must first be. time, yeah. yes. Al although everyone has heard of these crystals. Right. Okay. Um, and so it is common knowledge what they look like. And actually, even as you get close to them, you can hear this soft, dissonant, tingle sound around them. And the air, as you get close to them, feels like ozone. Mm. Uh so I, I would like to remove the hat that I'm wearing and go over to Mral and say, do these crystals, these memory crystals remaining here, like remind you of these? So you open up your head? I take my hat off. Remember, I have, oh, I have a hole in my head. I got hit with a mace. I'm wearing a top hat over it. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I surmise the, uh, I think, does it not, Mr. Monty? <laughs> Looking at uh, Chug's crystals that are in their head these crystals are the only difference is that it looks like the crystals that are in chug's head might be surrounded in a very thin glass layer mm. now Don't break the glass <laughs> already a little cracked so yeah these are uh, almost identical except yours are encased in a uh, armor of glass it is That's... my understanding in brief dealings with the Amethyst Academy that perhaps they use glass to contain delirium. But this is so strange. I I don't. Rem I've never been here. Uh, Chug, are you older than fifteen years? I don't know how old. I mm. I remember waking up on uh, the ditch on the side of a road some years ago. Well, you know, the way to find out is to get to the North Pole, and the way to get to the North Pole is to get the compass and get the map and get inside. Let's get moving. Very curious. Very curious mm. indeed. Yeah, and, and um, the the only thing that um, you, you surmise, uh, Chug, is that most flesh bags can't touch delirium. Mm. It will... Yes, it, meat it, friends it, are very fragile. Um, <laughs> but given your material... You probably, you feel like you could pick it up safely. I definitely try to pick it up immediately. Yeah. it. You're you're able to handle the crystals just fine. Um, and <laughs> like, it takes a moment for you to pull them out of the rock, but yeah, it. I try to bite it. Wait, uh, um, uh, wait, Chuck, this is a, uh, this is one of our findings. I would, before you consume these crystals, maybe we, uh, I don't know if anyone's ever eaten them before. And if this is the I'll source save it for of later. contagion, I open yeah. up. Dessert. I open up my uh, my chest cavity storage unit and stick the crystal. Think of what we could discover if somebody tried to eat delirium. What would happen? Imagine the possibilities, uh, yeah. the, the, the research potentials, the, the historical findings, the Delirious. culinary findings. <laughs> I mean, oh. let's get moving inside, inside. Yes. But while we're here, this shed. Back here, the tool shed. Let this be our uh, regroup point. If we get split up or something goes terribly awry, let's meet up with this shed. Fair enough. Uh, w w one question. Uh, there's a big glass dome, right, on top of the building? Um, most specifically, the, the northern wing of the building appears to have like a glass house style dome over top of it. But then there's the central dome spire that rises up. Um, you can almost imagine the same style of architecture as say like the ca like like uh, a government building style spire or dome coming mm -hmm. up over the center it's circular rising up into a dome w would it help us to get a, uh, a a bird's eye view perhaps and I snap my fingers and an owl appears on my shoulder who is a brown owl wearing the same brown robes like not the robes his feathers are the same color as my robes and he has a big beard and mustache 
and eyebrows and actually looks almost identical to me, but an owl. And he appears on my shoulder. I could send the great and handsome owl Cyrus for a bird's eye view and perhaps to peer through the windows. Hmm. Sounds like a good idea. Okay. Um, Owl Cyrus uh, takes off from my shoulder and is going to do like a flyby of that dome window and just take a gander inside. Yeah. All right. Well, then in that case, I will uh, bring us over to the map. So, so uh, Cyrus, why do you dress like an owl? No, 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 no. The, the owl and me, we, we don't we don't look that much alike. This is Owl Cyrus, the most handsome and intelligent owl in all the land. And it is also my familiar. Any any relation or, or physical uh, 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 coincidences, it's all coincidences. No, you dress like an owl. Is the because owl perhaps your son? <laughs> I don't understand how these things work. Magic. It's just magic. Okay. So, is it my son? Hopefully, you can all, all see this here. Yeah. This is the northernmost chamber. It is a long chamber uh, that um, is, you know, a good uh, almost 100 feet long. Um, with ending in two circular sections and you can see all the windows dotting alongside of it that are all uh, made of stained glass but in lighter colors as to allow the most amount of sunlight in and then as you peer down over top uh, as your as your owl peers down over top you can see that there are several um, flower boxes and planters that are in the building and two fountains that both the fountains are still working and sending out massive puddles of water into the rest of the, in, the the room, such that there's puddles probably about uh, a couple inches deep all throughout this entire room. One of the planters has in it a massive cherry tree, and it has overgrown its planter by a fa by several magnitudes. It might have once been quite normally sized, but this thing has just burst right out and open and is blossoming with all manner of flower flowers and a few cherries here 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 and there. But it's just in full bloom. It look it, it, it this beautiful radiant pink and purple petals mm -hmm. everywhere. Um and it which dominates the entire room. Um in several of the other planters are several strange looking purple flowers, which glow with a bit of an octarine light as well. And throughout the rest of the chamber, there's bits of shattered glass all across the floor from where the cherry tree broke through the ceiling. I don't look like an owl. The owl looks like me. Yes, I'm still on that. Um, on the opposite side of the room, heading to the south, you can see that there is a long hallway leading out of the room, and then there are two doors uh, that um, both have a sign on both the doors that says private on them. Hmm. Well, are there any doors into this? Like where, yeah, where would there, I find? There's a yeah. pair. There's a pair of, of double doors. Uh, yeah. One set is here and one set is here. And okay. the double doors uh, are, are um, made made of wood, and again, they're carved with this vine pattern depicting two intertwining trees. Should we go in? Oh, I've already gone in. Ah. <laughs> As I say that, you walk in. Oh, okay. Uh, any traps? Uh, <laughs> well, Chug, you uh, do you go through the window or the doors? <laughs> Uh, this was a double door. This is double door, yeah? Yes, correct. Yes, I go in through there. You head into the room. Um, are, and are you proceeding quietly or just like how much, what general noise level are you going to go in with in level? I caution? think that I've, uh, I'm kind of like mesmerized by this beautiful octarine glow. And I kind of just like really just want to walk into the room for some reason. Yeah. Um, so you head into this magnificent room. Um, that really, once you're in it, it actually feels rather humid. 
inside. Um, there, there's quite a lot of heat and humidity, and the 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 haze hangs in here quite heavily. Um, and it looks like there's even a few little slivers of delirium in several of the plants as well. Um, and something about the water looks wrong. There's a prismatic shimmer to the water itself. Avoid the water. Well, Chug, I don't know. Perhaps you can just walk through it, but uh, be are cautious. You, are you coming in, my fragile meat friends? I'm like poking my head in the door and I'm like, is it okay? Uh, I want Unclear. I just want to stare at that tree, right? It's just majestic flowering, like amazing display yeah. of nature. Give me a perception check. Ooh. Woohoo! I got a 32. There's a net 20. <laughs> the, the tree is moving very slightly, and on the trunk of the tree, the, in the nodern patterns of its bark, there's a face. Perhaps even the impression of a whole human body. As in, like trapped inside it or it's formed the bark is for the bark along the trunk forms the shape of a human body and face well at that osiris walks into the room and forgets all of his warnings and just starts walking towards this tree wow chug have you ever seen anything like this have i ever seen anything like this <laughs> yeah a bark friend it's a <laughs> i've i have many tree friends back home do they have bodies inside? Oh, I have not, not opened any of them to find out. It hmm. is the, it's not inside, it is the body. Most trees that I've spoken to in my lifetime, which is not that many. You speak many, to trees. It's happened on rare occasions. I've. Uh, He's an elf. It's some some of my friends have the ability to open communication with with trees, but I myself don't do it very often or, or, or dabble in such things. But in, in all of those times, every talking tree I've ever come across or tree that had a, a personality, never once did it exhibit a, a human form within its trunk. That is marvelous. I say as I continue to slowly approach the tree. As you get closer to the tree, uh, Mraul, you can now see more clearly that there's bits of bone protruding from where the human form is. Ooh. Should I... Should we try to communicate? Well, we... we yeah, we're... Let's, uh... Let's investigate. Let's get closer. Perhaps this was the professor just consumed by his own, uh his own experiments or perhaps the tree wants us to leave it alone <laughs> chug that's hilarious my apologies i'm still learning to understand meat humor that's a really good one say it again say it again i've forgotten it already <sighs> mm. <laughs> um i'm going to st i'm going to look at the tree and i'm going to say hello in every language I know until it res and, and see if it responds. It's gonna uh, take a long time. After a few moments, um, the uh, of saying words, the a pair of eye of naughty, barky eyelids Ooh, open up. <laughs> well, they're, they're, they're like like no, like naughty. Sorry, I mean like like not. I mean. I mean, like knots of wood, right? I, I got so, it. Yeah. I got it. I'm yeah. just, I'm just <laughs> ruining the moment. Uh, not, not, not a barky <laughs> eyelids o open up, uh, and you see, there's, it's, as as it begins to move the bark, the bark of the tree is moving over a skeletal, uh, skeletal Ooh. flesh underneath. And, and maybe just a, a trimmings of flesh. And as the eyes open up, um, revealing human eyes underneath uh, that look up at you and blink. And the, the mouth that has these, just the bits of teeth and oh. looking back into the tongue and the throat. It, you, you hear a voice come and say, Oh, hello. 
Welcome to the greenhouse. A this is the atrium of the museum. My name is Professor and, and, and Head Botanist Anahita. If, if you just turn over here, you will see the prize of our collection. This is one of the cherry trees that have been preserved for many hundreds of years. We have kept this genealogy going. They were bred by the sorcerer kings of old to populate their gardens. It's such a fine specimen, don't you think? And over here, these lilies, well, they aren't quite the same as what they used to be, but oh, they've been on our collection for so, so very long. And she she begins to, to and as she goes, the boughs of the tree oh. rock and creak as the rest of the tree gestures to the other plants in the other planters in, in the rest of the room. Well, it's good to see you're so attached to your work. That was for you, Chug. <laughs> Ha 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 ha. Good one, I, Ral. I, I immediately walk closer, right to the edge of where the water is. Mm -hmm. And I, again, my quill is out, and I'm just like mumbling, like I'm like fascinating. And I just start like writing down notes and like examining the whole situation. Oh, are you a scholar too? I I would love to share my notes with you, but I let me see. I wonder where they are. And you hear this rumbling and this rustling, um, coming from beneath you, as Ooh. perhaps the roots of the tree itself are shaking the foundations of the building. I'm gonna grab Osiris's belt and just just hold him so he doesn't fall into the water as he's uh, oblivious to probably the earthquake. <laughs> And when did you discover you had become a tree? <laughs> and she uh, um, me on the E train. Oh, pr did pr she not? Pr uh, Professor mm. Anahita replies, "Whatever do you mean?" Nothing, nothing, my dear, nothing. Oh, uh, what we mean is we are in search of the true compass. Uh, Professor Al or Professor Audrey Andrey, if uh, either will suffice. Oh, oh yes, uh, Professor Professor. I I uh, Idri is is just in the rotunda mezzanine. He he's very excited about his exhibit. It's very very fascinating. He has some fantastic preserved specimens. It, it, uh, specimens? Oh oh yes, yes. Well, Professor Idri is is between you and me. Professor Idri's specialization is fauna. Mine is the flora. Just Interesting. happens to be the top line of the research papers. Over oversized fauna. Oh yes, oh yes, fantastically fantastic creatures. <laughs> Very worth seeing if you if if you're visiting here. In fact, how did you get in here? Shouldn't you have passed through the rotunda to get here? And and the tree scratches a branch. Come down to to scratch her. Have you paid your admission? Oh, but of course, but of course. Now, my, my, have you seen this compass? Oh, uh, the the compass. I oh. believe the professor keeps it in 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 the archives in storage under lock and key. Hmm. Well, we were uh, we were sent to investigate the security of the archives. See, yes, we're uh, we're the the Royal Security Guild of uh, Drakenheim, and uh, we're here to make sure that the archives are secure because we understand that there are uh, there are perhaps some rival professors who are looking to steal your artifacts. Do you think you could direct us to uh, who we should speak to to uh, ascertain the security of your uh, your vault? Oh, 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 yes. Archivist Michaela, she, hmm. if, if you head back and you take the east stairs down that's where that will lead you to the basement where the archives are bear in mind michaela keeps wondrous records of where everything is kept in the in the in the archives but of course the professors are the ones who keep the keys to any of their findings naturally well 
Uh, she seems completely unaware of her her ailment, which is which is baffling to me. I mean, wouldn't you feel if you're made of wood? Are you saying this out loud, right? I, 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 <laughs> yes, yes, I am. Oh, I, Cyrus, do not be rude. Just because she is not meat does not mean you should talk about her as though so she is not here. Uh, I was doing that out loud, wasn't I? I do this from time to time. I. Uh, hmm. We thank you, Malay. We thank you very much. We're heading to these stairs now. A wonderful garden you have here. Fantastic work. Keep it up. You'll deserve a diploma or something of it. Let's go. Let's go. Over and round. <laughs> Just like pushing, <laughs> pushing me along. Rao, come in. Can you not hear me? Oh, no, the icon oh. on the map. Actually, it turns oh, out I, I can drag you too. Look at that. I hang you. Thank you. Okay. So the, there's the central passage and the two doors marked private. But as you head through the central passage, uh, you can see a much bigger chamber. And uh, before I reveal it on the map, I think I will just reveal it this for I made a scaled down version of this room with some Dwarven Forge stuff. <laughs> so not not entirely to scale. Actually, this is uh, this this would be double scale. So what oh, you we'll see just zoom in. So then yeah. It, yeah. So this is the room that you see uh beyond. Let me just make sure that that's loading up there properly. Is everyone seeing that? Yeah, there we go. Oh. <laughs> this massive rotunda chamber is um about 100 feet wide. In the center of the chamber is the is a massive preserved dinosaur <laughs> on a pedestal the chamber itself reaches up into a mezzanine level and then this is the center dome of the whole building so you can see there's the the dome that rises up before and it is covered in painted art depicting all manner of primordial creatures and ancient histories and now surrounding the central creature in the middle are several great statues and in fact there are uh, there are statues and skeletons and other beasts and other creatures um including a com now this beast itself has its skin and bone and and everything intact it is like it is frozen in time and there are two other specimens like it one a stegosaurus one a triceratops and another um the central one the massive tyrannosaurus rex and then all throughout surrounding it are several other pedestals with other great statues and other prime like kind of the the most uh prize exhibit items across uh, uh, of the rest so this is uh this is our little preview setup uh and don't gonna... touch it osiris <laughs> it's fascinating don't touch it it's, you a know, museum. it's a museum it's said that that these creatures used to walk the earth regularly it's said still that some of them still wander the deep forests and jungles of the world i myself once saw the droppings of a tyrannosaurus rex in the jungles it was quite an experience. It tasted a little bit nutty, though. Now, did you know? Speaking of taste, it looks like there might be a limb hanging out of the maw of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Might be a, a leg. There's a boot on the ground. Weird thing to include in an exhibit, but we could grab it and bring it back for the trolls. trolls. They wa they asked for an arm and a leg. Is it decomposed? Is no, it, it is no, not. No, it looks fresh. Uh, th and this is a fun fact. You've heard this rumor. Bodies don't decompose in Drakenheim. It is a curious oh. effect of the haze that Oof. that bodies do not decompose. Okay. I, I, wait, wait, don't, 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 don't touch. Just, just. <laughs> I, I don't want to touch it. I, I'm very, I, I'm going to take a drink we from can my get hip on flask. The, on the I, way out. I feel like I need to prepare myself. We can get the leg for the road on the way out. But don't now, touch it. But, you can <laughs> see that you can see these kind of these pillared entrances that y you come through into the room on. So the room that you're coming out of has an inscription over it, Hall of Botany. Mm. And then to the west is another inscription, another gate like this that says Hall of the Arts. And then another one is the Hall of Antiquities on the east side. 
and then the the southernmost one is not adorned. Um, it looks like it might lead from the vestibule, the main entrance on the other side. Um, b- so west was art, east was antiquities, and north was botany. Yes. And you can actually see that above you, there's actually a mezzanine gallery level looking down, mm. and there's several skeletons that are hung up above. And so there's a second level. This room, it's it's about 60 feet above you to the mezzanine level, and then the ceiling itself is another 100 feet above that where the dome rises up. Well, should we try and find the east stairs to head downward? to seek archivist Michaela? I, I suppose, I suppose if we're, uh, uh, we should do what we're set out to. We shouldn't waste our time uh, studying things that are already well documented. And it's, it's here, it's not going anywhere. Potentially? She said the professors kept the keys, but let's see if we can at least find, all right, if we know what kind of key we're looking for, maybe that'll help us. Maybe we could just break the locks. You're quite the locksmith. Smash, smash. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna reveal on our on our other map Woo. there. Now that we've had now that we've had the much more impressive wow. showing, this is the actual scale of the 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 room. So it is it is like twice the size of what I built. With like if you if you're using the actual grid there, um, uh, dig dig. Yeah, I imagine that that's where I ended up. Yeah, so it, it is a it is a big room there. And then you can see the other room, the other hallways leading off off there. And then, yeah, you've got the uh, the Stegosaurus, the Tyrannosaurus, and the uh, Triceratops uh, in there. And then the other statues and exhibits. And there's uh, several lanterns that are in this room that appear to be illuminated by continual flame spells. Hmm. So yeah, there's the Hall of the Arts, and then the Hall of Antiquities leading off this room, and then to the south, it looks like the vestibule again. So let's uh, let's take the Hall of Antiquities, look for the stairs down, and see if we can find the archives. And now, I'm also going to warn you, Cyrus, before we go into the archives, there's going to be lots and lots of great books to look at. Mm. Not right now. We come back. Just so that you recall, uh, so that I, just in case you don't want to go in a direction you don't want to go, Botanist Anahita said that the mezz that the the east stairs in the vestibule Mezzanine. in yeah. the vestibule right like i said we go to the vestibule and the east stairs down that's, that's what i heard you say and clearly right back me up joke uh i went into standby mode while you were talking <laughs> <laughs> i have no idea what was said perfect so uh let's head to the vestibule okay Heading to the south, you enter the the vestibule, which is uh, a large chamber uh, that has a large desk with several uh, letters and, and chests in it and several waiting benches and some pieces of art and antiquity. Uh, and there's an inscription saying, welcome to the gallery, uh, w- welcome to the museum above. And there's two doorways leading off to this room, one to the east, one to the west. Um, and going through them, uh, unsurprisingly, uh, you are able to see that there is a small chamber off to the side with a staircase that goes both up and down and another doorway, the other doorway here that says, th- uh, this other door, this says private on it uh, with a small inscription on it. Sorry, where is this doorway? Oh, right There's here. There's a door here yep. and then there's the stairs that go up and down. Yep. Well, shall we adjourn to the archives? Indeed. Heading down the stairs, there's actually a chain across the stairs going down with a sign on it that also says private, like muse- gallery employees only. You just kind of step over it, I assume. I walk directly through it. <laughs> <laughs> it just snaps and breaks. And as you head down the stairs, um, and they they it's two flights of stairs down to uh, a chamber that immediately smells. Um, there's kind of this smell of musty old books that hits your nostrils as you head down the stairs and that strange kind of stagnant smell of dust. I feel right at home. And as you head down to the this lower room, um, there is a small gate and the room opens up into several bookshelves and 
there's two curious sights that you see right off the bat. As you come through the gate at the base of the stairs, you can see that the hallway opens to the north and there is a pool of water flooding in through the northern doorway that is glowing with octarine light. Ooh. Um, and in the rest of the room, there are several sets of shelves that are all in complete disarray and they're amidst the, the on them is a large cabinet on the walls, which has several niches for what look to be on the walls, thousands of keys. There are <laughs> thousands of keys, each key labeled and, and several of the keys are scattered across the floor. And you see lying face down in the water is kind of this pool of sludge that is roughly in a humanoid shape and grasping at the books on the walls and the keys that are all over the floor is a insubstantial woman. She um, is wearing a big thick pair of glasses and um, what looks to be uh, the, the garments of a professor or, or a librarian and she has a big uh, wide nose and rather plain looking features otherwise but she is glowing but uh, she is glowing blue for she is a ghost and she's grasping at the keys and mumbling to herself and she's like gotta put everything back I've gotta put everything back but as she goes to grab the key she picks a key up and lifts it an inch and drops it she'll pick up a piece of paper and she'll try to look at it but it's waterlogged and all the notes are ruined on it and she gra grasps at a key tries to pick it up and she's mumbling to herself how did this happen oh i i where are the professors i've got to figure out where does everything go readings of salutations uh are you archivist michaela she she looks back up at you and says Please don't tell the professors. Oh, good luck. We are the new janitorial crew sent to help you. Oh, you're here to help me. You mean yes. I have help? I indeed. Uh, oh, You've been oh, doing oh. such a job, bang up job. Upper management sent you some janitors. A look of excitement comes on the ghost's face as she said, you mean I have assistants? I have three assistants? <laughs> well, three and a half. We have a bird. Amazing! You can help me. L listen, listen. It's it's not an unsolvable problem, but it's it's a, it's a difficult one, and it seems like just every time I try to start. Well, you can see. These th these are all the keys for the archives. Hmm. But something happened, and she she looks over to the discombobulated puddle in the oh, water. Don't, don't look at it. She says something happened and well, I had a record book that said wh which key opened which box and where you could find it in the archives, but I, it's gone and I'm trying to organize things again. Ah, well, Osiris here is a master of books. If you give him a sound description of this record book, he's your elf. She describes it. It's a it's a big book with a brown cover and a lock on the side. And as she's describing it, Osiris, you kind of see on the muddied puddle and the you see the edges of this big brown book in the puddle underneath the underneath whatever this discombobulated mess in the puddle is. And as you look up from the puddle in the in there's there's this pair of broken doors that open up into a massive foundation room. It is a gigantic hallway of rooms that are covered that 20 feet high that have shelf upon shelf, pillar upon pillar of boxes, crates. It's like the scene at the end of Indiana Jones down here. This is like the entire under like city yes. block yes. warehouse underneath it. Un un underneath it. The whole room is flooded to about a foot mm. in water. This glowing ooze like water, and you can see the glow of octarine. And actually, looking down in it, 
It looks like there's roots that have broken through the wall on the opposite side. Perhaps that's where the waters all come from. And as and as Mikhail- so, it's not just aquatic marine water, but it's also some sort of weird sludge. Yes. What? Uh, great. <laughs> How far away is the uh, mushy body with the book? It's right on the edge of where the pooling starts. So like there's a small staircase that goes down from this room into the archive room itself. And at the base of the stairs, there is the mushy body with the book. Um, which shape water, I'm gonna try this. So yes. I, I I move to the stairs and I use shape water to try to push the, the sludge back away from the body. Yeah, you're able to push the sludge. It looks like the sludge is the body. Uh, in a lot of ways it kind of just with this squicky noise uh, but then there and you can see there is a stained and destroyed book in it given the shape of the sludge this was probably Michaela's body I, I gathered that and I'm and I'm, I'm I'm learning from what Chug told me earlier and although I look at her and I open my mouth to explain <laughs> what has happened to her I, I hear Chug in my head saying, don't say these things out loud. And I kind of close my mouth, push push the sludge back. Does the book look sopping wet with the same, like, is does it look waterlogged? Uh, are you going to pick it up? It is definitely waterlogged. I am going to use my mage hand. So once, uh, can, if I push the water back, can I also then, are these... I can't do these simultaneously. Can As I? your mage hand picks the book up, yeah. the pages fall out of it. Uh. And, and even the ins and as you as the pages fall out, the ink of the book like runs right out. That book was worthless long before you got here. That could have been a very valuable book and now it's I'm, I'm disappointed. I <laughs> Not you did. don't cry, Osiris. We will find other books. You did the best you could. Uh, the bigger problem is how do we find there's thousands of keys and we need one specific key and we need to figure out where the compass is. Hmm. Can you make illusions? Um, I can make. Do you think you could, you could fool her into thinking we found the book and... I have pressed a digitation. I do not have minor <laughs> illusion. I can clean the book. I, I like with my mage hand. I like cram the pages back in, and I press to digitate it to try <laughs> to make it look clean and new. So she I just like she can't touch it. <laughs> I have found the wh wait. The, this book is supposed to contain uh, the 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 keys, right? All of the keys. The, okay. the notes. So. Yeah. As Michaela surmises for, for you, the archive contains f almost 4,000 artifacts. Oh. Um, the, all the artifacts are kept either in chests or drawers in the archive itself. Hmm. And every key is labeled. And you can see on, on the keys are an, are an inscription that says row, shell, row, rack, shelf, box and so there's a, a so this is the archive itself does it look like everything's still pretty intact in there anything like. in the lower lowest shelf probably is not but everything <laughs> else probably is um and you can see that on the opposite side here is this root system that's grown in and where the water is all coming from that might be the roots of the mm. botanist <laughs> <laughs> Michaela, you're the you're the bookkeeper here, correct? You uh you analyze, you you decipher all the artifacts and 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 antiquities that come into the museum and, and you catalog them, correct? Correct. And you've been doing such a good job they sent you help, in fact. Yes, it, it's it's my job to make sure that every book uh, that every artifact that is kept in the archives is logged with where it is kept. I keep all the records in my record book. With 4,000, it's, it's hard to remember, but usually the, the usually the professors know where their own artifacts are stored. Um, but, and, and so if something's happened to the archive, 
we would need to talk to the professors and find out where they put things so that we could rebuild the archive. Now, Michaela, in my experience, uh, if one catalogs such important artifacts such as these, as I have been doing for 150 years, um, then one does remember specific artifacts and locations, ones of uh, specific importance or or value. And um, I was wondering if perhaps the idea of a key and location for a compass, one that used to belong to a Professor Endry. She rolls her eyes. She says, Professor Endry is a bit of a prima donna. And <laughs> he was so particular about that artifact that in his and his own personal possessions that his in my records he only let me write down which boxes were assigned to him and not what they contained because he was he was so suspicious that someone was going to try to go through me and steal his findings so i have a rough recollection of of what uh uh that you know, he had several boxes throughout, but I, of course, he had over 500 artifacts stored down here. And he's the only one who knew what they were. He, I assume that he mm. kept his own archive or records of at least what oh. some of them were. But, uh, but, and there was a there was a large chunk of them though that he would only let me record. Artifact of Professor Eardry. He wouldn't. Uh, he wouldn't actually let me write down what it was or what it contained. It was a source of some consternation for us for some time. Well, I could imagine that's no good way to document books. I mean, what happens if you lose the information? Then it's just gone. Well, that's the problem, right? It's a, it's a poor choice, and um, I see why the Drakenheim Museum has fallen while many others Well, remain. this is why I was asking for help, because I wanted so hard to rebuild the archiving system. But the thing is, is that documentation and archiving is a very delicate task. And if we're not given the resources to properly do things, then things get lost. This is just mm. what happens. Of course, it's, it, it, you know, it's the unspoken thing of academia, but I just... I just needed more help and I could have made sure that I had a backup copy of the archives and she she You've been doing a great job. You've been doing a great job. In fact, that's why we're here to help you cuz everybody believes in you and you know what? You're the unsung hero of this place. Mm -hmm. I mean, cataloging 4,000 artifact artifacts and the like. Whew, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. So, why don't we help you uh, a little clean up here? Do we know how long like trying to put back the keys in some sort of rough semblance of how long would it take us? Like, could we kind of just do a five minute, like haphazard cleanup of this place to here, maybe put her to rest here? Here's the, the, the biggest issue that what you can surmise from looking at all this is you can definitely clean up the keys. They, you know, pick them up, spend about half an hour picking them up and you'll have them in order. And it's not a matter like, if, the, if this room wasn't filled with contaminated liquid and fluid that is probably going to kill you pretty quickly if you walk in there, it would be no problem to simply take every single key, open every single box until you found exactly what you're looking for. I, I was more trying to clean up, help her clean up her mess yeah. so that we maybe could put her spirit to rest. But Yeah, uh, that is very kind of you. I, yeah. not, if it's gonna, not if it means wading into death water up to our knees. If you, No, but actually... As you, if you help her pick up the keys and put them away, just back on the on the shelf mm -hmm. on the shelves, you notice that as she works with you, and as you're helping her, she becomes more corporeal, Ooh. and she's able to pick up more of the keys. Are, are we able to help her with all the sludge in the room? It's the sludge. Actually, I'm looking at the map. The sludge doesn't start till right at the edge of the room, right? Yeah. Yeah, and it's in the archive. So we can we can kind of we can we can clean this room like a champ. And you've got prestidigitation, the clean, yeah, spick and span. Yeah, like basically the way to think about it is the room that you're in with archivist uh, with the archivist. This is the catalog, and the yeah. this is the catalog room where the actual archive is sorted. But then the archive itself is the room that's flooded with uh. with, with sludge. Yeah, let's sort this. Let's let's get let's clean these keys up. We got this. I am um, using prestidigitation, mage hand, and my familiar. <laughs> Show I, off. Uh, I, I aid in the cleaning. 
Okay. You probably also are pretty uh, skilled at this sort of thing, huh? I, I imagine that I'm very, very good at sorting and organizing. Helping Michaela organize and sort it all again. As you do so, you see that her form becomes more corporeal. She's able to pick things up again. And as you're helping her, she's able to help more. When you first came down here, she could only hold something for a couple seconds mm -hmm. before it fell through her incorporeal body. But as you continue to help her, she can hold on to things longer and longer. And by the time you finish tidying up the room, she's moving about it, putting things back on her own. And she's like, thank you so much for helping me. Things are a little bit more in order here, but we've still got to find where the professor, where we actually have to, now that the, the catalog's in order, we actually have to get the records in order now. Hmm. Well, where do you think you could help us locate the professor? Does he wear boots, perhaps? Oh, yeah. He has these wild leather boots that he always wore, wore around. The uh, the boot on the floor from the leg of the Tyrannosaurus. Would, we, would you describe that as wild leather? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. We did see him upstairs. Uh, <laughs> at least caught a glimpse of uh, some of him. A fleeting glimpse. <laughs> and and of, uh, now... To get everything, of course, finished, I would also need Tizana and the curator's archives as well. Even if I just had a little bit of them, you know, there's there's other professors and anti antiquarians that work here that I won't be able to get their records straight for a while. But maybe you could... The other professors are very short with me, but if maybe the three of you could go talk to them and they could tell you where they keep their own records and we can clean this all up in a, in a jiffy. Uh, where are we most likely to find them? Well, um, um, Nostrum would be in the gallery, and Tizana would be in the uh, the hall of the ancient antiquities. And uh, do they just walk around there? Do they have private offices? Is, we saw some rooms marked private. We thought it best not to go they, in. They but... do. They have their offices off e each gallery, each Interesting. hall. Yeah. Very well. And friends, just so that you know, when we need to go into the room with the sludge, I may have a few tricks up my sleeve. Are you going to turn us into owls? No, I my no. my spell book uh, can actually manifest itself into a sentient being that can wander about. So, if need be. Well, with that, we're coming up on 8 o'clock, folks. So, as we move on to... Now that you know the problem before you, why don't we take a 15 minute break, come on back in and take it from there. And we are back from our break. We have taken our short rest. We have rehydrated, got more caffeine in going, Ooh. and uh, we are ready to play some more D&D. &D. Wait, we're playing D&D? &D? <laughs> I thought so. Oh, no. I thought we were just exploring virtual yeah. museums. This isn't real. In, in, indeed. Um, as always, uh, we just want to give a couple of quick, uh, quick shout outs as well. Um, uh, as usual, we are using Roll20 this evening uh, uh, for our virtual tabletop. And all the maps that you see tonight were actually built in uh, uh, Dungeon Draft uh, as well with uh, some cool assets and maps uh, by uh, Neutral Party and Two Minute Tabletop. Uh, and we've got uh, our, our awesome cast made their artwork. Uh, which is amazing. Uh, and uh, take it, no, mine no, was uh, who's your who's your uh, artist? Rachel, for Rachel Denton. She Rachel. is at uh, Talinier T A L L I N I E R on Twitter. Uh, she's someone I follow on Twitter that does like par character oh, portrait commissions. Um, she's British and she's super talented. So she jammed out in like two days. Nice. Like, boom, boom, boom. Here's a little here's my own. Nina, Nina, did you draw your own artwork? I did do mine. And that's, that's I also beautiful. take commissions. I am at N I H N A H on Instagram. Uh, that's amazing because amazing. yeah, both of both of your artwork is incredible. I will say, because I I like to be honest, I did draw my artwork, but I definitely like took from six different images and <laughs> mashed it all together into like a character. Cause I'm not naturally an amazing artist. I just like to draw. So it's, it's you a bit stole, of tracing. stole like an artist. Yeah. yeah. I tracing, yeah. copying everything, but I made him my own and I made him what he is. And he's awesome. Yeah. Speaking of awesome stuff and awesome people, uh, uh, Nate, you want to let us know uh, as our special guests, uh, what, uh, what you guys do and who you are. 
Yeah, we are we are Dwarven Forge, and we make the world's finest miniature gaming terrain. Uh, you can check it out on our website at dwarvenforge.com. Uh, you can sign up for our newsletter. And actually, we have a new website that's going to launch in about a month, mid, uh, mid-February. Nice. And we have a, a restock of sets coming in, hopefully middle of next week. Um, and you can follow us on all the social platforms if you want to find out what we're up to. Basically, a bunch of bunch of artists making cool geeky toys nina what are our what are our our social you can find us on instagram we are um sorry we are at dwarven forge official on twitter and facebook we are at dwarven forge on twitch we are dwarven forge live and did i get them all i why do i feel like one is missing (laughs) <laughs> Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Those are the important ones. We also have yeah. a Discord server, which is really fun. You can check that out too. Yeah, and we're on we're on Twitch uh, Wednesdays. We do our sort of behind the scenes show of like how we how we make stuff, what we're up to, building whatever. Thursdays we do a hobby hang, and sometimes we have live plays or whatever. We love we totally love what you guys do, and uh, it, we'll uh, I'll post that up one more time before we we head out this evening. But we, we I made some fun Dwarven Forge setups to show off uh, yeah. a real life version of our our maps this evening as well, so we can celebrate that stuff. Can't wait to get back into person again so that we can actually play on the terrain. With that though, our three heroes, um, Rowell, Chug, and uh, Osiris, have ventured into the ruins of Drakenheim, to the old royal museum of the city. There, their quest is to recuperate several artifacts of a lost of that were going to be used for their future expedition to the North Pole to uncover the mysterious origins of the Warforged. Um, while they are here, um, they have found the museum in disarray. For the great archive of the museum, which houses the artifacts, uh, has been flooded with delirium sludge. Ugh. And worse, the there are thousands of artifacts housed in the archive, each under lock and key. All the keys are here. <laughs> it's just which key goes in which box. <laughs> and getting there. And getting there. Yeah. Um, so... However, the ghost of the archivist surmises that though her records have been destroyed, by finding out the records of the professors, you might be able to put together somewhat where, which keys to use and what you need to unlock them. All right, shall we, friends? I, uh, yes, it, w- it would appear that we should probably go back upstairs, find the offices, and uncover the uh, poorly kept document and organization to figure out which key goes with which artifact, so we can uncover the three artifacts we came here to find. Let's do it. Archivist Michaela, keep up the great work. We'll be back with some records for you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. I'll try to figure out how to deal with the flooding in the meantime. <laughs> yeah, see what you can uh, do about cleaning that up. Alrighty. Heading back upstairs um, into the, uh, the, the vestibule and then back up into the, um, the central rooms there. So there's several rooms that are marked private uh, that you passed by. Um, and in addition to that, uh, so... You're now in, uh, we'll say, the the front gallery here. I'll just uh, gather all your tokens together here. Bring them on down. So this is the front vestibule. You know that there is the staircase which leads back down uh, to the archives below. Um, And then in front of you ahead is also the big big rotunda mezzanine with the giant T-Rex and the Stegosaurus and the Triceratops in it. And the strange limb with the boot hanging Mm. out of the T-Rex's mouth. Also off the vestibule are two other wings that you have not investigated yet. The Gallery of the Arts and the Hall of the Antiquities. Well, she surmised uh, they would be in their respective wings, perhaps in their private offices. Should we start there? 
Yes, there were two doors marked private back in the botanical garden, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. It would probably be at a different area for the for Professor Endry. Hmm. Are there Well if we assume the professor's been eaten, perhaps we should pilfer his private chambers. Yeah. We should. What what department was he again? He's the botanist. Uh, he, he studied with uh, with alongside the botanist. He studied uh, gargantuan flora and fauna. Okay, because she said that she was the flora and he's the fauna, the fauna. So the office might be in the same place after all. Yeah. So there were two. I think there were two doors there. Both mm-hmm. were private. So one probably belongs to our friend the tree, and the other one to our friend the leg. Oh. <laughs> Are we worried about her seeing us sneak in to the private chambers? Can can she turn her head? Yeah, she was she was quite spry for us. We can tell her that we're janitors. Well, she already told her that we were the security detail. The, oh yes, I the, forgot. Mm. Memory crystal's broken. We can tell I, her we're, we're just checking uh, the 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 locks from I the c- inside I with could. the doors closed. Or I could shroud us in a veil of shadows and silence. That also works. Won't she see the shadows? Well, no, that's the... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to... And then how about, how, about, how about we go with the shroud of silence and then as the backup plan, we tell her we're inspecting the locks if she discovers, sees through, penetrates our disguise. Maybe we can just tell her that he's dead. Mm. And we need to fix the archives. Why lie? It is true that uh, I, 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 I'm not the greatest liar, nor am I the greatest persuader. She nor doesn't am I very seem like a fan of his anyway. But if she doesn't see us, then she doesn't know. We don't have to answer any questions. Okay, so option one, lie. And then if that fails, option two, truth. Why is I- option one lie? Well, if option one is just hide, option two is lie, option three is truth. We'll work down the tree if the tree sees us. Mm. The so, tree decisions. so it should be hide, truth, lie. Hide, As the three of you deliberate, you can all <laughs> roll me a d6. Oh, no. Uh, three. three. Two. Five. Okay. You think you hear a shuffling. It stops, but a, a, a shuffling of weight coming from the rotunda. Did anybody else hear that? Yep. Cover. Hide, hide. I, uh, I duck behind a chair. <laughs> I also duck behind a chair, but I am gigantic, so. <laughs> the, the rumbling subsides. It was just like a loud step. Mm, like Tyrannosaurus size step? Maybe. Oh. All right. So, uh, okay. Well, from, let's all get hide behind this chair here. <laughs> so, I, I, uh, I pull out um, out of a little pouch. I pull out some ashes. You know what this is? Ashes, burned mistletoe, and then I take a sprig of spruce. And I put it on, I give you everybody like some ash eyeshadow. Past, pass without a trace. So as long as you stay within about 30 steps from me, you will be shrouded in a veil of darkness. Can I have eyeshadow if I don't have eyelids? Yeah, just, it just looks good. Trust me. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. I'm just gonna pretend that you've drawn like two slashes of angry <laughs> eyebrows on me. Like <laughs> me. Nice. It's perfect. Where are you guys gonna All go? Right. Let's go up to the, the north one with the two doors, right? Okay. Yeah. As you head across the rotunda, you can't help shaking the feeling that those dinosaurs moved. They're not standing in the same position they were when you moved through. Fascinating. Keep moving. <laughs> I start to approach the T-Rex. No, 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 no. Stay on target. Stay on target. Darkness. Shroud of darkness. Keep going. Oh, keep going. Oh. Sneak. 
I'm it trying. looks like all three of them actually have a collar. I, I I look closely at the collar. Is there a name on it? I'm looking at the T-Rex. Yeah, there is. It says Bernice. 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 I grab a Cyrus by the collar. And <laughs> oh, oh. Why would you name a dinosaur Bernice? Like <laughs> Bernice is a perfectly good name. I, I, I suppose that's true. Alrighty. Moving back into the botanical gallery. It appears that the botanist is fast asleep. Her eyes are closed. See, it worked. <laughs> Brilliant. Your low skill magic seems to have paid off. Well, it's low because it emanates from the ground. See, it is <laughs> nature-based magic versus your celestial heavenly magic. Yes, I know all about nature-based magic. It's it, it's some of the more simple magic to be able to grasp. I, I, primitive. I primitive is the term. Pr- right. Primitive. Primitive. It takes far more skill to be able to, to decipher the nuances of the magical energies in the world. But, I mean, we, 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 we right, don't have to. Let's go to, go to the door on the right. As Osiris <laughs> is talking about this, I just, like, pull my flask out and start drinking again. <laughs> Hey. All right. With two of the doors marked private, will you take the one to the east or the west? Mm. Chug? I pick the one to the west and just start trying to open the door. It opens without, without a push. Um, uh, what's a, uh, it Quite easily. Revealing a rather small uh, and dusty room that uh, appears to be a cloak room. <laughs> There's uh, several uh, niches on, on the wall for, for some coats and other accoutrements. Um, and there is a closet across the room with some cleaning supplies in it and some brooms and other things. Um, and then across the hallway, there is another door uh, that um, that Ooh. this door here, uh, it is labeled, quite simply, Professor Idri on the front of the door. Yeah, nailed it, Chug. First try. How did you know? Clairvoyance. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Fascinating. I start writing in my book. See, that's high class magic to you. That, that is. was a lie. <laughs> I oh. am practicing. <laughs> oh. I, 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 I wave my quill and the, the words disappear disappointedly and I slam my book shut. Hmm. Uh, um... Opening the door to Professor Henry's office, it is unlocked. Um, and in the first room of the office, there's several adjoining... Uh, there's actually two exits to this room. Uh, you can see that there is a door to the south and a small door to the east, which the door to the east on... or Sorry, the door to the west, west. on this side, it actually has a bar, that, like a, a lock bar that's been lowered ac- uh, across it from this side. Uh, so, uh, it would be barricaded from the opposite mm. side. Um, and the, there, there is in this room that you're in are several bookshelves and a globe of the earth. And it looks like, uh, the professor has put push pins in the globe of different cool. colors, indicating all the places that he has been on his travels. And there's another color that seems to indicate all the places he would like to go. There are far more places that he would like to go than he has been. <laughs> wow. Um, and the the bookshelves uh, in this room have several... We- um, just scanning the shelves, um, from what you can see, Osiris, um, these bookshelves have the titles of books that you would want to put on the shelves to look smart. So the titles on these shelves are famous titles that anyone in the field would immediately recognize as like the canon of well-known works. So these are Osiris's bookshelves is what you're saying? (laughs) My God, he has all the same books that I have on my shelf. So, so there's nothing in these books that you would consider rare. These are the types of books that someone shows off to be like, I have read these famous books. Have you? 
ask me about the famous books that I have read because I am smart. His library is only the books that I keep on my introductory library that I show to my initial guests. I have a much deeper library of further knowledge uh, that far precedes what, what measly take another drink he has <laughs> on, on his shelves. All right, so um, Cyrus, why don't you give these books a once over, being a uh, book lover that you were? Uh, Way ahead of you, as I'm. And going. I want to. Uh, I want to, as a as an amateur cartographer, I want to investigate this globe. A little bit. Hmm. Um, looking at the so as a as an amateur cartographer, one of the things that you know is that scholars currently cannot agree on the exact shape of many common land masses. So no, so most globes are basically art quite artisanal artifacts to begin with, because aside from the main continent, most scholars in this part of the world can't quite agree the exact shape of the North Pole. Mo uh, so looking at this globe, it looks pretty, but even to your eyes, there's a lot of artistic license with mm -hmm. many of the land masses on here because the truth of the matter is, is that not a lot of people in this part of the world know what the other continents are like unless you've actually been there. How big is this globe? Um, the, the, the globe itself is, uh, about three, about three feet, maybe two and a half feet mm. in diameter. And it's mounted on a, uh, um, kind of a spinning apparatus in, in the middle of the room. So too large to fit in my quiver of Ilana. <laughs> if you had a bag of holding. I mean, it's kind of like six staffs or like 12 javelins, right? <laughs> I mean, I do have a magical chest that I brought to p procure our items, but I can only really summon it once. So if you'd like this globe, we need to accumulate all the items we need, including the globe. I will summon the chest and we can throw them in there to take back. Now, Chug, what do you make of that door? Let's that open it. One. No, wait, 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 wait. It's barred on the other side. He Massive flora, fauna, like, could be keeping the big beasts, like, just before you open, like, just... Or perhaps the information on where he keeps his artifacts is carefully protected behind a barred door. So the artifacts can't get out. That doesn't make sense, no. All right, open it. Because the bar is to keep... I'm going to start lifting the bar. Okay. The, the bar lifts up. The door is of similar construction to the, the, door, the first door that you came through. And as you open it up, um, oops, I hit oops. my back button. <laughs> Just got to re reload my page there. The door opens up into the, the West Gallery hmm. itself. So it connects. So there, it looks like the, the, the rooms here actually connect to each other. Um, and you can see here that the West Gallery is, um, as, as the, the way opens up into it, you can see that uh, this is the the north end of the west gallery and in the west gallery what it it is the walls of the west gallery are a plain neutral white for everything else in this room are paintings housed and all the curtains are drawn and there is a dim dancing light hanging in the air illuminating it mm -hmm. and it appears that actually several um flat walls have been erected inside the gallery to allow for more hanging space for the other portraits. So you actually open the store and it's it's listed as private on the other side and it opens out into the gallery. And all you hear as you open the store is the creaking followed by this other low uh, um and the, there's a there's a groaning noise around the room. And it appears that each of the individual paintings have a dancing light that is illuminating each painting individually. Did one of the paintings moan? I thought that was Chug. No, you hear a groaning. I noise have not said anything. And some plodding footsteps down the other side of the of the hallway. In in uh, in the gallery. Let's hide. Uh. uh are there any chairs to hide behind? 
There's uh, only a glow. You, you could. Uh, there's no chairs in the hallway, but you're still mostly in the uh, in in the office of Professor Endry. So you could hide around the corner pretty easily. I'm gonna push up against this bookshelf here, and all right, you can all give me a stealth check. And everybody gets plus ten because my pass without a trace. Nice. You said plus ten. Yeah. Oh, that's On very top high. Of your, yeah. It's, it's astronomically high. I'm a thirty-three. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm a thirty-four here. <laughs> I, I rolled low with a twenty. <laughs> okay. As you all take your hiding positions, you hear these trudging steps coming up the way, and you can see a a, a walking zombie. It's uh, flesh sl- slowly falling off of it. It's a remarkably well preserved draw- zombie, and he's dressed in a in a rather shabby suit uh, that appears to be made of tweed. It's like this light brown color. And he's got a tie and a, and a collar, and the zombie shuffles forward. It looks like he might have a name tag on as well. And he shuffles forward down the hall, comes around to one of the paintings, and you can just see that the zombie goes up to the painting and then rather erratically and with jerky movements, puts his chin underneath, his, his hand underneath his chin and and his, he- his other hand on his head and scratches it and looks at the painting and goes, Ugh! and then stops, considers for a moment, drools a little bit, and wanders over to another one of the paintings can, and does the exact same thing and looks at the painting. Can I read his name tag from here? Give me a perception check. Oh, yeah. Careful, friends. It's a well-dressed, uh, art-loving zombie. 27. It's Professor Nostrum. Hmm. It looks like uh, Professor Nostrum, according to his nomenclature. Uh, we should ask him about the Pact of Safe Passage. Do we ask zombies, or do we kill zombies? If we kill him, how can we ask him? All right. You have me there. All right, let's go. Who wants to talk to the zombie? Oh, I'm the one who speaks all the languages. (laughs) Uh, all, all right. Hmm. Uh, yes. We're, okay. Uh, Osiris straightens up his robes, walks out, enjoying the artwork today, Professor. The professor is looking at a painting. Um, the painting that he is looking at is a a large. Uh, painting um which depicts a throne room perhaps the throne room of drakenheim seated upon the throne is a pit fiend and strangely in the painting is professor nostrum alive but he's in the painting and it looks like he is talking t- in in the painting. He's bowing to the pit fiend on the throne. It's just art. It's just art. Talk to him. <laughs> Fascinating. Talk to them. Talk to them. Uh, I nudge uh, Osiris. Um. Uh, ah, the the painting of the throne room with the pit fiend. A lot of people used to say that the king of Drakenheim was 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 quite the the, the demon. <laughs> of, of of a man, I, I believe. Uh, fascinating that you made it into the painting as well. I've never seen this work before in this uh, particular uh, uh, manner, Sir uh, Professor Zombie, Sir. The the zombie ignores you and walks to the painting uh, immediately south of it. Uh, a painting that uh, that depicts a lighthouse on a rocky crag and there's a fisherman in front of the lighthouse and another uh, there's a few fishermen sitting by the lighthouse as it goes out over the sea and you can just look and sitting with the fisherman 
having a glass of whiskey, perhaps, is Professor Nostrum. <laughs> I, I follow the zombie, like I, I tail him and I walk up and I'm like, Ah uh, yes, this looks uh, similar to the to the lighthouse in in Ashafen, actually. Um, interesting take on it. Uh, once again, there you are in the painting. He uh, walks up to another painting and looks at it. Uh, the The painting is uh, a uh, a painting of one of the saints. Um, he's but there's no Professor Nostrum in this painting. He continues to look across each painting, walking from painting to painting looking at them intensely and before moving along i as i'm following along are is professor nostrum in most of the paintings except this one or is it kind of here and there as you look around there there appear to be five paintings in the gallery all five of these paintings are stunningly realistic in their depictions and professor nostrum is in five of them and as you kind of look at it it's almost like he's out of place like the artistic style of the painting is one thing but professor nostrum in each painting is perfectly realistic like uh, almost impeccably so there is a painting of him in the throne room with a pit fiend in a light uh, uh, in front of a lighthouse by the ocean with several sailors there's another painting of a farm scene where professor nostrum looks to just be tending to cabbages uh another f scene that is underwater um ruins and professor nostrum is swimming with a mermaid and in the final painting appears to depict the an astral realm of floating rock and professor nostrum is floating mindlessly amongst the rocks in the painting those are the five but then you also said the zombie looked at one that did not have a minute the zombie is literally walking from piece of art to piece of art and looking at them okay. so there's a whole bunch but these are the five special ones that have him in it and there's a bunch of, all the rest of them are yeah more normal. and they're like looking at these paintings they are as i said there's something about each of them they're 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 the five largest paintings in the gallery um most of them are as tall as a person hmm. and professor nostrum is in each one and i go up to one of the paintings and very very gently poke the professor nostrum in the painting as you go up towards the painting your hand passes through the painting and uh we'll just say that you, you've gone to the one of the lighthouse and you feel the rain on your hand can i stick so, my head through yes you can Do stick your it? head through i grab chug's waist so they don't get <laughs> you, i'm taking notes you step into the painting of the lighthouse and as you stick your head through <laughs> It's almost like the painting is just a door frame in the middle of nowhere in this paint in the world of this painting. And you can hear in the rain, there is Professor Nostrum laughing and telling a body joke with several sailors up on the edge of the lighthouse. I'm going to go over to him. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Are you I'm dragging you. If you if you can't stop me from moving forward, you're coming too. Uh, all right, you guys can make it pose grapple checks. <laughs> I'm I'm just watching and taking notes of everything that's happening. I'm at 10 minus 1 is 9. <laughs> 19. <laughs> all right, Chug's get getting his way. Their way. Uh, uh getting their way. Pardon me. Um so Chug, you storm into the world of the painting, head up along the pathway, and you can smell the brandy the sailors are drinking. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm. He's not stopping me now. Definitely not. <laughs> Did you drag, like, morale yeah. into the... So I'm just there yeah, now well, by myself? Yeah. And, yeah. and as they move in, the, the painting, from your perspective, um, Osiris, you just see the two of them uh, you, you see both Chug and Raoul just in the painting, but still. 
I have scrolls floating around me. There's quills writing things. <laughs> I'm documenting all of this. Um, so, Chug, uh, you charge for forth to the group of, of salty Not sandwiches. charging, just Ch walking <laughs> very enthusiastically. Okay. <laughs> Not aggressive, though. And mm -hmm. as, the, uh, as the sailors uh, see you, one of the sailors speaks up and says, Ah! This is a stout-looking one, is, are, 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 aren't they? Come, share a glass of brandy with us and tell us of your, your tales of the sea. I suppose I will have to make one up. <laughs> I sit down with them. Imral, are you still mm, like, I'm being fine. told? You follow me? <laughs> All right, well, I, I sit down with them. I pick up a glass. I hold it out. I have a nautical joke. What do you call a fish with no eyes? What do you call a fish with no eyes? Fish! 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 <laughs> and fish! The, the sailors giggle <laughs> ba ba back at each other. <laughs> Your comedy is unparalleled. Yeah, that's, uh, it, it slays them back at uh, home. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and, and the, the, but the sailors uh, turn to, to Chug. You got one better than that? Uh, I have not actually seen the ocean. What do you mean you've not actually seen the ocean? Look out at it! And they, I, they point to the sea, which, even in the world of the painting, like, you're in the world of the painting, but everything has that, like, that patina of, of oil paint to it. Like, all of reality is just slightly oily. Except, of course, the, the, for the, um, the professor. Um, and and the the sailors say, "What do you mean you've never seen the ocean? There it is." I guess today is the day. Are are where are we right now? Can you tell me? Oh, well, this is the lighthouse. This is the ocean. The lighthouse, where? What do you mean where? This is all there is. The beautiful sea, the sky. How could you want anything else? I turn to Professor Nostrum. I, hi, Professor Nostrum. Does he react in any way? He says, he says, oh, yes, that's my name, P Professor Nostrum. Where did, how did I get here? Where am I? Lighthouse, the sea, this is all that exists, but we need your help. Who? What? Who are... Come. I have books for you in the other place, through the door. We'll tell you jokes about the sea. V this is highly irregular, but very well. Lead the way. Lead him out. I say to the sailors, thank you for telling me about the sea and the lighthouse and for sharing your brandy with me. As you lead Professor Nostrum out, you step out of the painting... And you're holding his hand, but as you step through back into the reality, he's still there. He's stuck in the painting. Back in. But, um, <laughs> Osiris, you, back in, you should just... come this time. I, uh, yeah, you guys step out, and I'm like, oh. And then as you, you'd like turn around and go right back in. So this time I, I poke my head in, and I'm kind of standing like partially in. And and the says, oh, where did it was like you you disappeared for a moment. I'm I don't know where I am. Says the professor. You know where you should be. I always wanted to. I always wanted to take a vacation by the ocean. Have you have a fondness for farming cabbages? What about floating through space? Is that is that something you were hoping to do in life? How about worshipping pit fiends? <laughs> hmm. You know, I used to love art. I wanted to do so many things. I just wanted to... I saw all the paintings and thought of all those worlds. All those things that I could always do. So inspiring. 
so captivating. Now I'm here. Huh. Uh, Professor Nostrum, since we're recalling old tales of former lives, it was said that once you did, in fact, acquire safe passage for your voyage across the North Ocean. The North Ocean. <gasps> The North Ocean! This is the North Ocean! <gasps> I remember, yes! Yes! I'd, I'd negotiated with pirates! It was going to be so exciting to sail on a pirate ship! Now, where did I have that contract? Where indeed? If we could just remember where hmm. you put it, everything would be better, and you would remember why you're here. We could leave on the voyage right away, as soon as you tell us where we can find it. Once we acquire the Adventure passage, awaits. Indeed. I... It's in my lockbox. That's right, it's in my lockbox. We just have to go to my lockbox. That's right. I... I don't remember my lockbox. Hmm. I told myself... I had a phrase, what was it? To remind myself if I forgot. It was... It was... Oh, I think it was five words. I think the first one was... It was just. Just. Just... Just something, and that was supposed to remind me. But the first word was just. There were five other words. It was five supposed paintings. to... Uh, thank you very much. We're going to leave you to your voyages now. And I pop back out of the painting. I go back. I take a quick drink with those sailors again. I follow <laughs> them back out. I've I've already, like, walked towards one of the other paintings. Probably the safest one, I would assume, is the cabbages. So I approach that painting. And I now I just walk right into the cabbage painting. Hopefully hmm. it works and I don't just walk into a wall, but... Yeah, you walk into the cabbage painting and you're in the midst of a farm. And there is the professor dressed as a farmer farming cabbages. He's got a beaming smile on his face. Hmm. Well, let us get the information out of him. Uh, professor Nostrum, well, hello. It's good to see you farming out here. It must be a great time that you're having. Uh, your lockbox. We just we were talking earlier about it. What was the the code again? He speaks in a, a kind of a bumpkin voice. <laughs> Professor Nostrum. That's a fancy name. No, no, no. It's just Farmer Nostrum. It's just, that's that's. I ain't nothing special, you know. That's that's a big fancy city learning, don't you know? Yes. Um. <laughs> indeed uh, do you happen to know where your lockbox is oh well you know you know, that's a farmer secret you know I keep all the money and everything in a nice secret place right here that's a little bit of a prying question don't you think uh, we're old friends <laughs> we were going to travel the north sea together don't you remember the North Sea. Yes, you've always wanted to travel the North Sea, and we had agreed to accompany you. We need only find the documents. But... Well, I always wanted to be a sailor. I thought... I'm not a farmer. Who... Who am I? Don't ask big questions. Just think <laughs> about the North Sea. Who are any of us? Doesn't matter. North Sea. I remember. We've got to go on the voyage. Yes. That's yes. the, the lockbox. <gasps> mm. Right. Oh, but I can't. I can't remember what the past. There There's got to be at least words. one word that you could remember. Just. I don't. I think one of the other words was up. Yeah, 
up. Up, you're sure? Yes, up. All right, thank you, Farmer Nodstrom, and I walk back out of the painting. <laughs> oh. Let's go visit some mermaids. I think we should go to the pit fiend. Well, let's see if that. Uh, see that one I want to go to space. <sighs> can we? Can we just do the pit fiend last? <laughs> Which one would you like to try next? Why put off the unpleasant? Well, maybe perhaps we it is a friendly it pit fiend. Maybe I mean, we can figure it out with four out of five words. We could sell one of your souls to it. How do you know I have nine souls? That's a, that's actually a myth. And there is no such thing as a friendly pit fiend. Let's go. Your your choice, Chug, other than the pit fiend. That is the only one I wish to do. Well then, Chug. Space? No. All right. I'm. If you, I trust you, Chug. You're, you. We're, right. we're following you. I'm going. You enter into. So you're going into the throne room. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All righty. You step through the painting. You feel the burning sensation of the fire emanating from the massive muscled fiend as its wings stretch out upon the throne. And before you, you see Professor Nostrum bowing in front of the pit fiend. He has an iron shackle around his neck and a oh. gag in his mouth. And uh, the the pit fiend laughs as you enter and says, <laughs> I am King Grob, you mind us. What do you dare petition for me, King of the Depths of Fire? Do pit fiend speak abyssal or infernal? Infernal. infernal. Cool. I, I can't infernal. understand it. Um, I so I I guess. I guess I walk up and in Infernal, I go, hello, painting pit fiend. Uh, we're just here to talk to your, your, your um, gagged associate. We would like to ungag him temporarily, ask him a few questions, and we will be on our way. How Osiris, amusing. make sure to tell it that we are not kink shaming. <laughs> we are not king shaming. Yes, that's what I said. Is that what you, you said? said? <laughs> Nailed the, it. the fiend replies. First try. Nailed it. You would like to speak with my pet then, eh? Fine. What? The price. I demand a mortal soul. Very well. You can have it as soon as we get what we need. No. I will have the soul first. Is this a real pet fiend or is this, it's just a painting, right? Like Ooh. it can't hurt me. All right, I want to run out of the painting, run back to the big uh, atrium, grab the boot, run back into the painting, <laughs> and present him with a mortal soul. Oh, oh now we're grabbing the Clever. boot in the T Rex's mouth. Okay. No, it was on the no, floor. No, there was one on the ground, too. Oh, there was one. On it, the was, it fell on the floor. Okay. Uh, it, it was just a boot on the, a soul, as it were. Ha! All right. All righty. <laughs> you run out into the atrium, grab the boot, and you hear a growling behind you as you bring the boot back to the painting and offer the mortal soul to the pit fiend. And as you bring the boot into the painting, the a spectral version of Professor Endry appears and attached to the boot. <laughs> like he's got it on his spectral foot. We can't offer Professor Entry to the pit fiend? <laughs> Two birds with one stone, wait. <laughs> Would you Let's rather bring... offer yourself, Osiris? No. No, I wouldn't. How about the owl? No. The owl doesn't The owl is soul. his son. Mm -hmm. It seems an interesting deliberation ahead. But we only have a few minutes left, so I think you shall all ponder that for next time. <laughs> and we'll oh, wrap up boy. there for the night. And there was a growl in the atrium? Yes. as you, I, I'm assuming like you just like tabaxi it, boomed yep. it back. Uh, Didn't to, even look back. Yeah. Then yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Woo. laughs> well, uh, this has been an interesting misadventure. 
uh, to say to say the least. It is so wonderful to play with both of you, Nate and Nina. Uh, but we will wrap up for tonight. But you'll be back with us next week, next Tuesday, for part two yeah. of this awesome series. Yeah, can't wait. Yeah, I don't think it's a misadventure, right? We haven't we haven't uh... we haven't messed up once. Not once. No, perfect. We're, we are no. on the ball. Yeah, let's see. Let's see how long, much longer that lasts. I think. Uh, I <laughs> think you might have. I what think you might wrong? have stirred the hornet's nest this time. Yeah, I think. <laughs> I, I, I feel like we're just getting to the the point where it's yeah. about to go really. Mal's cleverness may have doomed us all. <laughs> In, in, in any case, um, a big thank you uh, to Nate and Nina for joining us. Uh, both of them uh, amazing creative minds uh, at Dwarven Forge. Uh, uh, very good friends of ours who have been a huge part of our hobby for so long. Mm -hmm. Please, if you wonder where all the cool terrain from all the Drakenheim series have come from, it's almost all Dwarven Forge stuff. Uh, and so be sure to check them out uh, over there. Uh, Nina, do you, have, uh, do you want to just recap your, our so your socials for us so that we know sure. where to find you? On Instagram, we are Dwarven Forge Official. On Facebook and Twitter, we are at Dwarven Forge. You can find us on Twitch. We are Dwarven Forge Live. And I think those are all the major ones. And what's who are you? What's your... Uh... Oh, my! you can find me on Instagram. I am at N-I-H-N-A-H. -H. And I'm uh, on Twitter. I'm at Nate Taylor. N-A-T-E-T-A-Y-L-O-R. It's such an honor to be on with you guys. This is so fun. Thank you, Monty. Thank you, Kelly. Yeah, no thank you. Week. Yeah, so just just as as our fun uh, recap uh, from from us, uh, Kelly, do you want to give uh, give the the spiel for us on uh, all that the the good stuff of where people can find our, our other stuff? Absolutely. So just so that everybody knows, uh, thank you for joining us today. Our videos and live streams are made possible thanks to the generosity and support of our Patreon community. And if you are enjoying our work, please consider becoming a patron of our show. You can find it in the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. We also have a phenomenal Discord community, which is exclusive for our patrons, where you can come in and discuss all sorts of D&D and Drakenheim related things with us as well as take part in our monthly writers rooms where you get to help us come up with new scripts for our Thursday episodes and you can take part in our monthly Q&As where you can submit questions and Monty and I will go live on Twitch to answer our Patreon questions um, also we have a book coming out and dun, Monty dun, I'll dun. let you take it from there with this yeah so the untold tales of Drakenheim are uh, a small sneak peek of some new stuff that's to come in the upcoming Drakenheim book which we are going to be working on with Ghostfire Games later this year uh, The we are going to have a Kickstarter campaign later on this this year if you're interested in finding out how uh, you can get your hands on that or more info head on over to drakenheim.com we have a mailing list there that'll let you know uh, when the Kickstarter goes live we're not going to really spam you otherwise uh, so check that on out and um, uh, we're very excited. We got a whole chat on our Discord as well uh, where people are asking us questions about what's coming in the book. There'll be more news and updates as we get further on into the year, but we're really excited about, uh, about that coming up. Um, a few other things. First of all, a big shout out to Kyle as well, who is in chat tonight, uh, helping keep everything organized behind the scenes. A big shout out to him. Uh, Jill and Joe will be rejoining us in a couple weeks when we come back to Shadows of Drakenheim. But for now, we're going to continue on with the Untold Tales with more awesome guests. Uh, Nate and Nina will be back with us next week mm -hmm. uh, at 6 p.m. Eastern time till 9 p.m. here on twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. But of course, you can find all of our awesome, great content on YouTube as well, where Kelly and I cover everything Dungeons and Dragons including advice for players and guides for dungeon masters. That's at youtube.com slash dungeon dudes. And you can also see all the prior episodes of the untold tales of Drakenheim, Sh dungeons of Drakenheim and shadows of Drakenheim right up there as well as the well as on most podcast platforms too. With that, thank you all so much for watching tonight and we will see you next time in Drakenheim. <laughs>